How about this little surprise? Frazier Friday FT Live before the Division Series begin this weekend. Braun, Frazier, Kratz all in the same place. Kratz rocking the foul territory shirt, world softest shirt, seen across major league clubhouses. Man, you know, how'd you get one? You don't know about this. Hmm. I got I got it off of uh, foulterritory.com. Foulterritoryshop.com. That's right. Good job. The softest nice. shirt in the game. It yep. is soft. It's it is like soft. I, when I tell people how soft it is, I'm like, I'm like, this is like Todd Frazier soft. <laughs> like, I don't want like, that. I don't want to be soft like that. Yeah. What? I got a little hard soft. edges. <laughs> nope. Soft. No. There's a sensitive side to this shirt. Hey, <laughs> welcome back, dude. Thank Great you. work. Good to be back. I How feel was like the I've series? Been it was. It was interesting. Quick, quick, and interesting, man. Quiet. Quiet. Of course. Quiet. But uh, hey, give us the seat, dude. You were. Yeah. A lot of crowd grounds. noise. Yeah. I mean, tell me listen, what happened when you think about a playoff game. You really think about you know, loudness. I mean, I could count the number on my hand how loud it really was. You know, they got up for a couple of things. They didn't hit. I mean, listen, there wasn't much for the crowd to get involved in, but when there was, it was, you know, usually you hear that deafening. It's like deafening, but it's nothing. 19,000 first game, 20,000 the second game. I mean, you look out there and there's plenty of seats and you're like, man, you just feel bad. You, you feel bad. You know, I don't know who I feel bad for. I don't know if it's the team, the fans or whomever. Or the stadium. I, I don't the know. The city, too, yeah. because clearly there are humans that yeah. live in that area. But, they just don't go to the games. But also, a 308 start doesn't help. Okay. Sure. I mean, let, let me put that in fairness. Hey, 308 doesn't Minneapolis help. on line one. Yeah. Um, no, understandable. We're they good. still have earthquake warnings from yeah. how loud that stadium was but, in, in yeah, Minnesota. When, when I left there both games, like, there wasn't a fan in front of me, which is, you know, you, you can, no, and it's kind of crazy to think. They were getting their early bird meal. It, yeah, it was it was nuts. Like, I'm leaving. Usually think, like, you're jam-packed, like, trying to get to your car. Crickets, man. It, it was uh, it was kind of, like, eerie a little bit. But Texas came to play, and um, their pitching looked really good. So, we'll see what they do in ball. It's going to be a different story when they get to Baltimore because it's going to be like Philly. Haven't been there in a while. This crowd's going to be nuts. Yeah, and we have Ken Rosenthal joining us in this first hour, and he's – on that series and ken's mr baltimore too oh, he is God, he he's is. a junior junior yeah well we actually I wonder if we're allowed to call him that. junior you can definitely call junior. him whatever you want yeah he's he's junior he'll go with the junior. flow hey junior yeah. you know what else we're gonna ask ken about but we'll talk about it for a few minutes first the phantom il let's charge the damn mound mm. because we'll start with news and then we'll shift back to previewing all the playoff matchups Billy Epler is no longer part of the front office of the New York Mets, and we'll show you some of the tweets that rolled through over the past 24 hours. Steve Gelbs called it a shocking move that the Mets announced that he has resigned, not resigned, resigned. It's a Tough big, word. It's a big word in our world. There's Andy Martino. Yeah. Billy Epler's fast resignation lands as a major surprise. Steve Cohen and Epler had previously expected Epler to be part of this leadership team at least for the foreseeable future you know also just quick side note terry francona resigned i remember i saw that on the bottom line and i was like okay there's no dash resigned because i was like he's he's done with them yes he is done with them anyway um to give a little more context it comes out five seconds later that there is an mlb investigation on the uh injured list usage from the new york mets <laughs> in the past year i cannot wait to see what the allegations are, because if it has anything to do with just a basic phantom IL, welcome to Major League Baseball. <laughs> well, then it's, it won't be the first one here. I got a feeling if it does have phantom, like people, it's going to be not now. People are going to be like, all right, we can't do this anymore. It's, it's been going and, on forever. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, you hello? got a call? Oh, yeah. oh yes. 2000, 2010, you're calling. Oh, what was, what was happening in 2010? Phantom IL? Oh, yeah, MLB is 2023. They're just finding out about it. Yeah. <laughs> what did that they watch the Krasinski's video? That was the Phantom DL. Oh, that was the Phantom yeah. DL That's then. That's true. That's yes. true. It's changed. Yes. Did you see? So AJ in like April or May brought up how the Braves called him to go on the Phantom 
IL or DL, whatever mm-hmm. it was. What was it, 2016 or something oh, like that? Yeah. Yep. And he was like, cool, I'm down, but we have to call it anal fissures. And they said, did you hear about this? No. Yeah. And awful. they said no. So he still went on and they called it something basic. Like a hamstring or that something. Because yeah, so they originally, they usually want to go to you and say, oh, you have a sore back. When you're getting up there in the end of your career, a sore back looks worse. Like if you still want to play, you can't be like sore back or barking elbow. Like, oh. boop, check him off the list. He's done. So we're going to get more info on this story. But I guess that's my first question for you guys is, so, all right, you know, I love to do this. It's Todd Father. It's end of the career. Todd Father, we want you to go on the Phantom IL for a couple weeks, dude. Can you do it for us? We'll just call it a sore back. No big deal. But let's say you're like, I want I want to go one more year or something like that. I don't yeah. want teams thinking I got no. a sore back. Not at so, all. All right. So, hey, Todd Father, you good? little Phantom IL action. What do you think? Hold on. I got Uncle Louie on the other. Louie, I'll call you back. <laughs> hey, um, what's going on? Yeah, man, I'm definitely not doing that. I just talked to my Uncle Louie, and we're going to have a big problem if I got to go back there. No, but serious note, I'm not going on no Phantom DL, man. I got I got to get mine. I, I got goals. Are, wait, wait, wait. I got goals to make. You are getting yours. <clears throat> no. You get I'm full talking, salary. Nothing I'm not changes. talking about full salary. I got some goals I want to meet. If I have 199 Tell holes, him. I want to get the two. Tell him he's hitting 190 right now, so we either release him or fan him. Okay, so you're hitting 190, and uh, we also have this thing called waivers, and I don't know if anyone's going to grab you there, so then you would just be out of the game. What do you think? Can can you you can't hear me? And no, I'll just, <laughs> no, listen. I, I, all right, I'll be on the Phantom DL. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, you got it. Great. But okay, we'll talk later about this. Awesome. Thanks. <clears throat> this is Billy Epler, by the way. Now I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's the thing. Like, I mean, you guys yeah. know this is a great part of this show is just like, let's be real. It's something that exists. Teams mess with it all the time. Social media was popping off last night. They were like, uh, hello, have you been paying to the Dodgers and all these other teams? that have dudes that go down. Plus, you also have guys that get sent down to the minors to kind of rest them up. Yes. Like, you know, like we had that with Yuri Perez. We had that with a couple dudes on the Orioles this year. Who's the starter that went down? I'm forgetting. Good starter. Um, Grayson Rodriguez? Well, he went down. But he went down for real, things. for real. Yeah. Another starter. It's okay. It'll come to me. Don't worry. That went down. Anyway, I got, I got two things on this. I want to know who leaked it. Was was Buck just was he just going out was he just going out the door? He's like, I'll take this, I'll take this, and tell everybody that. Or was it Cohen? Did Cohen leak it because he's pissed he didn't hang around? Uh, I don't know. You know who who leaked this investigation? And the second Why would thing, Cohen leak. It? And by the way, it's Tyler Wells. Remember Tyler Wells got sent down oh, for a little right. bit. Yeah, yeah. Now these guys are getting past. Now he's innings. transitioned to the bullpen. That's how they've kept him out of the. Mm-hmm. He closed the the clincher. But anyway. Why would Cohen leak it? Why would Cohen? Because he's pissed. He didn't stay around. Who didn't stay around? Epler. No, 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 no. I think he's resigning because of the investigation. No? Uh, that's not how I read it. They thought that he was going to be a part of this thing. It sounded so like I. they would have had the conversations already. And then three days later, he's resigning. And then they, then your owner tells on you, no. And also, most of the owners don't like Uncle Steve because he makes them seem cheap. I don't think that's a his okay. alley. But my thing is, all of this? We're not going to hear anything about out about this. This is MLB on MLB crime. They're going to be like, guys, we got to clean this up. Just sweep it under the Farhan Zaidi. I think Stripling talked about it earlier. He came out and said he was kind of – he came out in the public and said it. I was there. So let's, let's say – okay, so if I was at the Giants and I got put on the Phantom IL, now whoever's making that decision, you look back and you go, okay, well, where was that GM before? Oh, he was in L.A. or oh, he was in, he was in with the Rays. Oh well, he must have. He didn't just come up with it on his own. Like mm-hmm. when A.J. was with the Braves, John Coppolella. People can just honestly keep making him the scapegoat. He's just the one that got caught for some things that other GMs were doing. So you can't sit there. And so I, I have a hard time believing that an MLB on MLB crime type of investigation is gonna. We're gonna find anything out. You're like, oh, this was just kind of a one-off. Billy Epler was doing this on his own. He's he wants a job in the game still. He's not going to come out and say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just doing this on my own. No chance. He's not going to. He's. I don't think he's going to do that. Just like I don't think John Schneider's going to throw his front office under the bus for making him pull Jose out of the game that he pulled him out. Wow. 
the one other thing I'll say is there's so much turnover with the Mets. To, to me, in terms of how this team operates going forward, I actually don't think it's a huge deal. Like, sure, it helps a little continuity in the front office if there's some people there because Stearns is coming in, David Stearns, to take over. But, I mean, David Stearns' is experience, he, he's been able to run a front office for a while. Like, he'll be fine. I'm not concerned there. I think it knows it's people. just eventually, and hopefully this <laughs> now reaches that point for them in the front office, they need some stability. It's been so many faces for so long. And that includes in the past five years, now two owners, right? This is the second owner who should be there for a long time. Four general managers, four managers in five years, okay? Now, a couple of them had some shit going on behind the scenes, so that was quick. <laughs> After Brody was running the show there, Zach Scott and Jared Porter had all the weird shit going on. Um, did not deserve that job. Uh, so anyway... Now you have some stability here, but there's still like some drama playing out at the finish line of what the Mets hope can now be like, just like a consistent known dude in the front office who knows how to kind of run this thing well. And they hope that he's Andrew Friedman, even if that's way too much pressure, like that's where the status bar is set for him. Is it going to be? I mean, is, I mean, I, is he going to be Andrew Friedman? Is it going to be He's going to have all the resources of Andrew Friedman. But is it going to be consistency? That that's the biggest thing. You just said the consistent they haven't had consistency. What kind of what kind of contract does Stearns have? The Cohen say, "Hey, you got to turn this thing around in 4 years." I don't know when, what the contract number is, but we can find out. Cuz when you turn things around super quick, you have to make moves to deplete your minor league system. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. You can't build a minor league system in 4 years. You can build a championship baseball team in four years true so all of those things okay these plans yes we had this plan and this plan they're fine in milwaukee they're fine in tampa if tampa doesn't make the playoffs this year for some reason they'd be like people would be like just a tough tough market tough brewers they don't make it people weren't even picking them to make it so it's a feel-good story you know tough market tough market you don't make it in new york in april if you're not in first place mm. This guy's a bum. Well, Give me a thing. ball. <laughs> that's the thing in New York is even more than winning, drama takes over oh, a lot of the time. Okay, so we'll get more insight from Ken on this. And of <clears> course, <throat> there'll be more to this story. Let's jump into the postseason. So hello, Phillies Braves. It's oh, coming. And we covered a little bit the other day. Todd Father, your initial thoughts. I mean, this is what we had been anticipating. And it's not even in the CS. It's in the DS uh -huh. because, you know, you don't reseed. So you just have the bracket mm -hmm. lining up the two heavyweights, and we'll show some tweets here with some quotes. Alec Bohm on facing the Atlanta Braves. Quote, I mean, it's a war, man. It's a bunch of really good players on the field just battling. They don't give anything away, and they play clean baseball. They've got a good team, <coughs> and we've got the same. And then a couple other things. So Matt Gelb talking about how the Phillies were you know, figuring out what game one looks like because then you have Wheeler and Nola pitch – uh, lining up for games two and game three. And that's where you do get your disadvantage to having to play in a wild card round just now. Like that, that True. does make a difference. We'll see. Right. But that does make Maybe. a difference. Maybe. Maybe. I, I, Rangers, Rangers been paper, the best out of three of them against the Braves. Rangers really? is the best. He has a one ERA. He has a strikeout, one strikeout per nine against the Braves. Nola and... Nolan Wheeler are good, mm -hmm. but not a one ERA. Wow. Phenomenal. So people, it's one of those things he, he, that people forget about him, man. Rangers, Rangers, he's a guy. Been, he's been doing it. He's been doing it. He's he's come out of the bullpen. Now some of those appearances were out of the bullpen. He had two stinkers in twenty twenty two against the Braves, but outside of that, it has been awesome. Has he been announced as of this second? No. Why? Just gamesmanship. Dude. Ah. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't he? Start? I haven't heard any any other reason why he wouldn't start other than they could go with a who else? The they opener? could go with Sanchez. No, Christopher Sanchez, right? Yep. Has done really well, and so they're trying to decide. The talks I heard, not nothing from insider info. The talks I heard was they're talking about Christopher Sanchez hasn't done as well out of the pen, so they thought about doing a tandem, you know, a a piggyback kind of thing and bringing. Ranger out of the pen because he's had he's had experience and success coming out of the pen. So they haven't said who it's going to be. But Sanchez is is also good. It's not a I got to look up what he's done against the Braves this year. I haven't looked that up, but 
there's a chance it's him. Mm. Can I make an argument that it should be Ranger on the road? Go ahead. Guy who's been there mm-hmm. before. You know what I'm saying? I like it. And has the good numbers and don't get too cute early on. Uh, I wouldn't say it's too cute. I would say it's how do you – it's the idea of how many innings do you need to get? How many innings do you need to get out of those two guys? Because those are your two guys. If if Ranger goes five and Sanchez is only going to give you – he's notoriously been taken out this year at like a 60 to 70 pitch range just because they felt like when he's gone 100, he's gotten rocked. But he's been like – he's had a couple games where he's gone 70 pitches, no hit. You take him out and it's like – uh, so you're looking right. So you're looking. How do you get the most innings out of those two guys? Somebody talked about Taiwan Walker coming in between those guys. Not saying they're throwing this game away by putting those guys in, but who are the two best guys to put in there? And if you're going to go with Sanchez and Sanchez and Ranger, I think there's there's a thought, there's a talk about what you know who needs to start that. Okay. Yeah. What do you think on the Brave side, dude? Do you think this team's coming in like, yo, we just dominated people in the regular season. We're going to be in good shape. This lineup's insane. Our guys also have been squashing all week the long layoff, the rest, you know, because you're sitting for a while waiting for these games to start. The Phillies now just had a couple days off too, so it's not like, you know, they're playing back-to-back days and they're in their hitting flow. But I, what do you think for this series? I think they saw – how the Phillies are playing, and they're not a wild card team for sure. They know these boys can bang, they can play, they can pitch, and they are um, they're getting after it. They know if they got to go to Philly down 0-2 or 1-1, they got they got to win these first two games. And I've been saying this ever since that last both. game. I think they got to win both these games. In my opinion, I'm not saying they they can't win in Philadelphia, but it's freaking raucous over there, dude. If they give up one run, it's like five nothing. It's it's really insane. They, they're they willing this team to win. So, for me, if Philly could find a way to get one win in Atlanta, I am I think they win the next three. Okay, so help me get through the BS talk because, like, I've covered postseasons for years and I'm in the clubhouse and you're talking to the guys, especially when you're in the scrum and everybody's with you. They're just, like, in BS mode, right? So, <clears> let's <throat> say it's 1-1 or they're down 2-0 and they're in Philadelphia and it's, like, um, day before the game, like, travel day or whatever and we're getting yeah. some interviews and all the Braves are going to be, like, it's all good, you know, it's just a regular game, still play it at a ballpark, so the fan stuff doesn't really, you know, affect us or anything. Is that bullshit? I mean, I, I you would play it. Like, I would if say if you were so, there, you'd no, be like it, it's gonna what? affect it's gonna affect the strongest. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, it's listen. Um, I used to love playing in front of crowds like that, but still at the end of the day, you feel it. Whether you think you're 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 Mr. Gung Ho, you're the best player in the world, you feel that static energy, that that liveliness of the crowd. You know, one strike comes. You're like, oh, shit, let's not get to two. Oh, now we're in a one-two count. Here we go. Oh, like you feel it. And, like, you feel like the umpire is going to call it a strike because he's getting into the game. You feel like, you know, if I check swing, you know, there's there's all these variables that come into play. Listen, it's playoff baseball, dude. This is going to be so much fun. I mean, Atlanta's going to be raucous too, but just I, – I don't know. People understand, like, up here in Philadelphia, the crowd, it's just absolute – it's def- deafening, to be honest with you, when you're playing in that field. Whether you're home or away, you feel every second of it. And the question you said, you're like, oh, I was in the scrum. I was. I think in that moment, the day before, the off day, you're like, eh. You know, because that's how you have yeah. to prepare. You can't sit there the day before no. and go, oh, my gosh. This is going to be us. I wonder how loud it's going to be. Mm-hmm. This is No, you're, you're preparing. So I think it's an honest answer. Yeah. I think if you mic'd them up during the game and you're like, Oh my gosh, yeah. this is ruckus. I would love to see some dudes with the whoops on. I think like a Zach Wheeler, the whoop band thing where yeah. they check your, mm-hmm. you can wear it when you're playing and you check your heart rate. And I think a guy like Zach Wheeler, I bet his heart rate goes down when he's pitching. Wow. Yeah, that guy, he doesn't, he doesn't I bet change a guy, one bit. He I bet a guy like, he's, no. he's right here, dude. It's I bet a guy like Garrett Stubbs sitting on the bench, his heart rate's going to be going through the roof. And that's, where the experience and everything comes into it. You hear that. Mm -hmm. You hear that. The best players harness that, and they take that, and then they become superpowers. Mm -hmm. Dudes are hitting balls where they don't hit balls normally. They're throwing balls 99 when they're normally 96, 97. How about the dude stop, man? Holy cow. The grand slam, like, 
easy money. That was left on left matchup too, bro. That was <laughs> dude. The story is incredible oh, this, too. Story. There's going to be more stories. But the story is so last year he got destroyed by fastballs, <laughs> especially fastballs up. Mm -hmm. You know, rookie, right? Last year, rookie yep. playing in the yep. bigs, playing in the postseason. They figure out your flaws and they just attack the hell out of it. And yeah. you're facing the best pitching. And he watched all of those games back intently, took oh. notes, and obviously. I mean, he could you talk to one to Philly official, yeah. right? You have to do it and work on it and improve it. And the Phillies are telling him, Hey dude, like, this is what you got to work on. And then this year crushed fastballs. And then it, that's like the cool shit in baseball where it's like, Oh, you can fix that flaw Easily. potentially quickly. You, you can, that's the, that's yeah. the easiest probably one to if, fix. Right? If you care you about do, it. Yeah. I mean, and, and his, and his heat map is crazy. <clears throat> I just went over the whole scatter report yeah. earlier <clears throat> and his heat map is crazy how he's still hitting. But going into that versus lefties, he still didn't hit a single homer off of a fastball from a lefty. All his homers were sliders. He has better numbers. He was hitting like 300, but very little slug. What does he do? Bases loaded. First pitch. I mean, just nail in the coffin and that place. Like, I'm getting chills thinking yeah. about. Like, I love watching that stuff when yeah. it's like you watch the fans. Yeah. When the fans realize I'm that the ball it. is going out. Yeah, home plate dudes are raising their hands and they're super juiced. Yeah. But when it gets out and then like people are not, there's no longer like, it's just a different kind of celebration. It's real. It's, it's not real. choreographed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not choreographed. And it's the just... last thing I'll finish on that before we got to go. Fastballs are easy practice. Like you could crank the machine up to a hundred miles an hour. Eventually you're going to get that, you're going to hit it. And it's about, well, you, it, not, you can, you can this see. This isn't for everyone listening you can and see, watching. You can you're see, not. Hey, listen, if they say, man, you got to work on a curveball, you're getting 80% curveballs. You can hit. 500 curveballs in the cage. Uh. It's still different in the game. <laughs> I can't. I yeah, can't hit the curveball, uh, uh, coach. <laughs> but a fastball is is a slighter. It's a slight easier adjustment to. It's a shorter. It's a shorter swing, yeah. and you have to you have to physically tell your eye yeah. that you need to be able to get to that four seam fastball. And he's done an incredible job of it. Let's Man. go. Let's go get some. I'm, I'm like juice. I'm right juice. Yeah, I saw your hack right, attack. Oh, we'll just watch let's you guys go. take swings. Uh, first poll question of the day. Watchstadium.com slash foul territory. This was something we brought up yesterday. Should MLB reseed each playoff round versus the bracket situation? So Ooh. Phillies Braves would not be the matchup right now. It would be Braves Diamondbacks since the oh. Diamondbacks are the lower seed there. Yes, no, or doesn't matter. Be right back. Ken Rosenthal soon. <laughs> Yes, with his skill set, obviously he can do anything. But I think it's really tricky when you're also a hitter and you're getting into, you know, 60 games as a pitcher, as a reliever. I think it's really, really hard. I checked with uh, the Angels people on this and, and I gave them that scenario. And one of their guys just said, no, that's not happening. He's he's either going to be a starter I mean, he's just going to be a starter, not a reliever. But I'm with you. I think he could be a great closer. I just don't know how you combine that with him also being a hitter. Your thoughts on Barrios firing three shutout innings, looking fantastic. And then I feel like everybody that was watching together said, well, this is not going to go well. Here comes Kikuchi in a weird spot. They're going to get punished for doing something that is just a little bit too much, overthinking it. Do you agree? Yes. Uh, and you're right, Scott. It's an organizational decision. It's not the manager's decision anymore. Fellas, I'm sorry. We have stopped watching the games. We've got everything set up before the game starts. Like, this is what we're going to do. And yet, if you watch that game, you recognize the Brios was the best option there. You cannot take him out no matter what the pregame plan was. And, you know, this happened to Blake Snell in the World Series a couple of years ago. He was the best player on the field. But they said, we're taking him out after, you know, six innings or whatever it was. Um, it really worries me that we are... We are figuring out the game based on a set of statistics, video, you know, algorithms and everything else instead of just watching the game, because that's the most important thing. And it worries me tremendously, because if you'd watched that game yesterday, Brios would have stayed in. And now back to foul territory. Let's run it. FT Live on Stadium. Braun, Frazier, Kratz, and our guy Ken Rosenthal, who will be covering this freaking awesome Orioles-Rangers series. First off, Ken, how you doing, and what's the vibes like out there? 
I'm doing well. Uh, I'm at Camden Yards right now, and the vibe is quiet. The quiet before the storm. <laughs> but at the same time, it's pretty palpable, the excitement in the city and the excitement around the Orioles, the ex- excitement that their players themselves are feeling. And it's kind of cool to see a team that hasn't been in the playoffs since 2016, like the Rangers, and here they are. I love it. So give us a little more on the matchup. Like, what, who have you spoken to? What kind of notes have you taken leading up to this one? I mean, basically give us all of the sideline reports you have planned for <laughs> the series that we'll see on Fox. Well, that's not going to happen, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> and you know that. But yes. essentially, the biggest question I have is the Orioles and how they will react to their first postseason. They are such a young team. And that's one of the interesting things here. Marcus Semien is a guy who's been around. Corey Seager is a guy who's been around. They've got playoff experience on that team, though they have several young players as well. Where the Orioles are this team, where the highest paid player is Kyle Gibson, $10 million. And the Rangers have seven guys making more than $10 million. Seager at 35 and Semien up there as well. So there's a difference in that respect. But the Orioles all season long have shown this kind of unique resilience. And it's that statistic, 91 straight series without getting swept. That goes back to last year. It's not losing more than four straight games. And Brandon Hyde, in his news conference just now, mentioned that when they had that big series against Tampa Bay, right here at Camden Yards, four games, they lost the first two. Tampa Bay was chasing them at the time. And then the Orioles won the next two. And that's the team that they've been really all year. I would expect it's going to be the team that we see in this series. But, again, there's that question when a team has not been at this stage of the season. So let me go on the flip side here. I want to talk about the Rangers. So I was there the other day watching them play. They looked very good. Their pitching staff, it seemed like all they needed was two pitchers to come in. Do you see, since since they talked about early in the year, their bullpen hasn't been the best. Jordan Montgomery and Nathan Evaldi, they looked absolutely unbelievable. Do you, do you see them doing that more? Do you see the pitching carrying them as well? They didn't play in front of a raucous crowd either, so it's going to be a different story. What do you see the outcome of those, the Texas Rangers? I can't figure out the Rangers, Todd, to be perfectly honest, because when I saw them in Seattle the final weekend, they lost three or four. They didn't look all that great. Then they had to fly across country to Tampa Bay, right? We thought, ah, they might not survive this. And then they came out and played like they played earlier in the season, got tremendous pitching, including in the bullpen where they've struggled. They had a good offensive series against the great pitching staff in Tampa Bay. They had more extra base hits, 11, than any other team in the wild card round. They hit some home runs, hit a lot of doubles, and that's who they are. They're an offensive team. So it's going to be interesting to see whether Bradish and Rodriguez, the Orioles' first two starters, who had great second halves both, will be able to hold them down. And that, to me, is a key. Now, yes, it's also a key that their bullpen, which was better against Tampa Bay, continues at that level. And Jose LeClerc is a guy to watch. He has finally kind of gotten back to himself. He's been a key for them down the stretch. He will continue to be a key for them. Chapman is Chapman. We've seen him up. We've seen him down, especially at this time of year. But I expect they will pitch better. It's just going to be a really interesting series from all of these standpoints, Todd, because I can't really get a feel for who I think is going to win. We'll see how it plays out. If you don't know who's going to win, who is irreplaceable on both teams? Who is the guy? And I'll, and I'll give you a hint. Catching is an important position. So <laughs> go ahead. Give your, give, give your answer. Well, the Orioles tra- franchise turned around when Adley Rushman was promoted last night. And would they have gotten there otherwise? Maybe, but we can trace really their improvement to that day. The record since then is much better than it was before. So he is irreplaceable for them. Gunnar Henderson is a great player, but not in terms of value what Rushman is to that team. The Rangers, it's funny because we've seen them lose Jonah Heim, their catcher. We've seen them lose Corey Seager twice. We've seen them lose Jacob DeGrom. And yet they have figured out ways to keep going. So I don't know that there is an irreplaceable player on that team. The one constant is Semyon. He has played a lot of games in recent years. He is a very durable guy, a very consistent, steady player, and a good player. So I don't know that I can name one on the Rangers because they've survived injuries to Young, to Heim, to Seager, to to Grom, all of these different players, and they've continued playing at a high level. 
It is incredible that you look at this team and say, yeah, DeGrom essentially didn't pitch for them this year. He's been on the aisle the whole year. And then when they pick up Scherzer now, he's been hurt for a bit. My question to you is going to take us in a different direction, but it's related to what I just said. Is there now an IL and then a phantom IL that we should officially designate since our guys have been talking about it on the show all year? One of those clips actually went viral with AJ requesting an anal fissure IL stint that was denied by the Braves. But what is your take on the Billy Epler investigation and resignation from the Mets after it seemed like he was going to be there at least in the short term? My take is I want to hear more because I'm not buying that this is simply about IL placements. David Stern came in. The plan was for Billy Epler to remain. That was Cohen's plan. It was Epler's plan. It was Stern's plan. Stern spoke highly of him just a few days ago at his news conference. I don't know what happened in the interim. And maybe this investigation that baseball is conducting is more serious than at least so far has been reported. But if we were going to fire general managers for phony IL placements, there might be 30 openings right now because this does happen. It's not that unusual where you see borderline IL placements. Now you have to have a doctor's certification and all that. But as a manager of a team told me yesterday, you can go and look at daily medical reports for any team on any day and probably put 30 guys on the IL because everybody's always got something. So I, again, want to hear more here, want to find out more because it just seems to me we're not getting the entire story. Has there ever been an investigation where it's MLB on MLB crime? Like, are the are the owners actually going to investigate themselves in this situation, essentially? Because it's not a player thing that they're investigating. Yeah. That, I, Eric, I can't think off the top of my head yeah. anything like that in particular, but I'm sure this kind of thing has happened. It's happened before, where teams have gotten caught doing things. I'll give you a couple of examples. San Diego with the international stuff, Atlanta with the international stuff, Boston with the international stuff. So yes, MLB on MLB crime does happen. And when something untoward happens, people scream. I'll give you even the best example. Houston Astros, sign stealing, electronically, illegally. They were punished by MLB. Do you think, you know, this is, you know, for players purposes, like for me, do you think players see this and they're like, Man, if this is my only option, I'll go to the Mets. Are they like second guessing? Like honestly, like this is it's a shit show here, man. What what should I do? Should I even think about dabbling? Like free agency. There's guys that are out there to go, but they see all this crap going on. You know what I mean? Todd, my feeling in free agency, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Guys go where the money is, and if they get the best contract from the Mets, if it's two million more than I don't know, the Red Sox are offering, they're gonna go to the Mets. Now, if you have all things equal. And you can make a choice, sure, that the chaos that we're seeing here, I don't know that I call it chaos, but the disarray that we're seeing might come into play. But overall, man, the Angels are as dysfunctional as anyone right now, right? The Padres seem dysfunctional too. If they sign a free agent because they're paying them the most money, then they're going to sign a free agent. That, that's how this generally works. One more on the front office front. Um, Ken, did you, I know you've been busy. Did you happen to catch the uh, press conference put together by Mr. Jerry Depoto soon after we heard those comments from Cal Raleigh about the Mariners not spending like they should be in the American League West? I am still confused and feel a lack of confidence based on the what was it, 54 or 56? 54%? 54%. 54%. 87 wins. And, you know, kind of bowing down to them for allowing Mariners fans to go through a little bit more losing before the winning. I didn't see the press conference. I certainly read about it. And I even wrote a little bit about it in my column today. Jerry DePoto, what he's saying, purely by the math, he's right. You want to win 54% of your games over a long period of time and you put yourself in the best chance to reach the postseason, then you will be in position to win the World Series. But it's the tone and it's the idea that a fan base that has never experienced a World Series title is being told, you should thank us for being patient and going about it this way because, hey, we're doing it for you. We're doing the right thing. Jerry DePaul... <coughs> has been to one postseason in eight years. And the patience level there is running short among fans, certain fans. I can understand that. 
And while his comments were not well put, in my opinion, the math, yes, I get that. But, man, it just seemed like there's a disconnect there. A disconnect between what fans are feeling, between what his own players are feeling. I'm referring to Kyle Raleigh and where they're going. And the other thing about this is that's an ownership that has spent on extensions. They signed Castillo to an extension. They even signed Robbie Ray in free agency. They haven't gone big in free agency. And what Kyle Raleigh was talking about, Kyle Raleigh was talking about was the Rangers, the team that they're playing, they've spent like $800 million on free agents in the last two or three years. When you lose out to that team in the end, which is what happened with the Mariners, as a player, you're going to want more. And that's not an unreasonable feeling for Cal Raleigh. Not an unreasonable feeling for Mariners fans. So that's kind of my reaction to it. I thought the remarks were unfortunate. You talk to a lot of GMs or sources that are in front offices. Do a lot of them talk this way? Do they talk in a, to me, it feels like a mitigating type of, well, you know what? Like, we're just going to try our best instead of, as a player, you lit, sit there and you go, I'm giving up years of my life. I am giving up, I'm playing pain, you know, through pain for this to make the playoffs. Do a lot of GMs talk this way? The way that Jerry did What's actually open out in the open? I was going to say, Eric, not so much openly, but as my colleague Evan Drellick at The Athletic wrote the other day, there is a sustainability fetish in this sport. And you hear it from a number of executives, presidents of baseball operations, general managers. They talk about sustainability and building a sustained contender. Hein Bloom talked about that a lot in Boston. And that's fine. And there's a friend of mine, John Lowe. He is now a writer who has been honored by the Hall of Fame as the BBWA Career Excellence winner. And he used to tell me, you try to win a World Series every year, you don't win a World Series any year. And I understand what he's saying there. But there is an in-between area where you are trying to win a World Series while still trying to be sustainable. And it seems to me too many teams take the easy path, occupy their sustainability fetish, and don't really take the necessary steps toward that final goal. And we all know, guys, the postseason is a crapshoot. And there is a randomness, a luck involved. You get hot, you're not, whatever. But what do fans want? I go back to Evan's column the other day. This is entertainment, man. This is drama. This is what people pay for. They pay to see their teams try as hard as they possibly can. And when those teams don't do that and then make excuses, it doesn't sit well. Uh, last one for me, Ken. We talk about analytics all the time. Um, some people think it's helping the game. Some people think it's too much. In my opinion, I like analytics, like you wrote. Uh, it enlightens the player. It, it shows some things about them, what they need to know. But I think sometimes we take that too literally as well. So, I mean, for example, for me, I was, I was having a great year. I was in my last 20 bats, I was batting 500. Next thing you know, I didn't play the next day because I was not hitting so well against the pitcher. When you're hot, you're hot. You leave the guy in, in my opinion. So my question to you is the Barrio situation kind of felt like it was predetermined he was only going to throw three innings. The guy's facing his team that he played for for a lot of years. They don't take that in consideration. They already had a predetermined. What I mean, he had a really good three innings. Things change. I change things in my nine-year-old baseball league. I mean, that's what happens. That's, that's part of baseball. It's part of life. Why do you predetermine those things when a guy is actually doing really well? You can, you can change, right? Now, why has it always got to be analytical? Well, I heard Tim Kirkjian on the show yesterday, and I could not put it any better than Tim did. And what Tim was asking people to do generally, teams to do, was to watch the game, react to the game, not predetermined and over script and those kinds of things. Now, I talked with someone today who said what the Jays actually were trying to do was use Kikuchi at some point in that game to turn the lineup around, right, to force the pinch hitters against the left-handed hitters, get the left-handed hitters out of the game, make them more right-handed for the right-handed arms in their bullpen. That was the plan. It wasn't that it was going to be three innings. I don't know that I believe that entirely, but at the same time, even that idea, I had someone point this out to me this morning, someone else in baseball, that Kikuchi, he's not a guy that comes in in dirty innings. He's a starting pitcher. When I say dirty innings, I mean with runners on base. So why not put a left-handed reliever in that spot. Have him get out of the inning, and then you've got Kikuchi later. 
There are all kinds of ways we can debate this, but the essence of what I wrote today is simply that the game should determine what is going on, not the numbers. And you use the numbers. We all want the information. The information is amazing. We know more today about performance and player performance than we've ever known. And players appreciate it in many ways because they use the technology, they use the data to get better. Brent Rooker had a Twitter thread about that this week. It was really thoughtful and well said by him. There has to be a balance. And teams talk about balance. Oh, yes, we balance everything, the subjective and the objective. They don't act like they balance it. They generally, not all, some, go one way. And that's where the problem comes in. There has to be feel for what is going on in the field. That was what I wrote today. My first three words today, bring back feel. Yeah, you're right. And I'm, I'm worried, like, especially John Schneider, I mean, you know, I don't know him super well, but he's probably going over that with a bunch of people. And if he just decided, screw it, I'm going to leave Barrios in and he gives up a two-run homer, they, they like might fire him in the offseason, you know, because clearly it's well, not just uh, him who, making that call. Right. And we don't know exactly who is making the decision. I got a text from somebody this morning saying, hey, the next time something like this happens, put the guy who recommended that and was really responsible for that action, the lifting of burritos, put him up in the press conference and not Schneider. Schneider, like all managers, has to be the spokesman, has to take the hit. We all know that's not necessarily fair. And uh, now we can switch them back, by the way, to Paper Tigers again, because they went from Paper Tigers to Blue Jays. Back to Paper Tigers if you've been following We offered them the articles. chance to change, to change our minds to prove me wrong. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ken, big, big question. Your boy Tim brought something up, and I honestly had no idea. Can I call you Junior, or is this just a <laughs> Tim Kirkchen thing? Because the way he said he calls you Junior – and the way he smiled about it and the way you're smiling about it, 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 like it makes me feel like I'm on the outside looking in. And I just want to know where our friendship is. No, our friendship's good. Um, so when I started at the Baltimore Evening Sun, may it rest in peace, in 1987, I was 24 years old. Tim was probably about 30. Richard Justice was on the beat as well. He maybe was a little older than both of us. I was quite young, quite green. If you want to use the word clueless, that would probably be fitting too. And they called me junior for a couple of reasons. One, because I was so young. And also, there was, at that time, maybe a slight, slight resemblance between me and Cal Ripken Jr. Not in the physical frame, but maybe facially. And Cal Ripken Sr. was the manager at the time. Cal Ripken Sr. was one of the most grizzled guys ever. I love him. He was really very fair with me and patient with me. And I always wanted to say, hey, Cal, everybody says I look like Junior. Maybe you're my dad. But I never had the guts to say that. <laughs> that's, why, that's why people call me Junior. And it's, it's people who I worked with back then. I competed against him. He crushed me every single day. And, it, yes, even today some people call me that. People who knew me back in the late 80s. That's good. That is really good. That this is great. Is, real, I know we got to go. Does Bill Ripkin know that story? Oh, I think. The, the story about me wanting to ask his dad that? No. Yeah. I've never told Bill that either. He'd probably <laughs> like that. Cal that. He yeah. probably would like that. But I mean, I could imagine if I had asked Cal Ripken Sr., he would have taken one look at me. He knows I didn't play pass like T-ball. And he would have said, <laughs> you would not have been my son. <laughs> so, That's great. So, I love you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, Junior, thank you. Have a great series, and we'll see you next week, Tuesday, on Fair Territory, right? Yes. It'll be Perfect. Tuesday this week due to travel arrangements. Yes. Awesome. Can't wait. Ken, thank you so much. Ken Rosenthal from FT, uh, Val, and Fair Territory, and you'll see him this weekend on Fox. Be right back. Let me ask you, because one team, and you're from the area, that's now done already in your former ball club, the Rays. So two parts of the equation here. One, were you surprised to see the results there? Like, they just had a bad series, bad couple games. They're done after starting off 13-0. and And two, were you like, what the fuck? Where is everyone? <laughs> Yeah, I, th I think on on both. But I was honestly shocked with the whole fan, uh, the lack thereof, the fan attendance and everything, you know, um, especially because I've seen that place rocking 
you know, over the years with the playoff series and um, everyone super into the games and like being involved in like, like I was saying earlier, like being at home in playoffs is a, is a huge advantage. Like you definitely get that home field advantage. So um, that was kind of tough to see. I was, I was honestly shocked. I was, I remember returning on the games like, all right, I want to see this place rocking for the first, like first time. Cause normally that's when they open up the third deck and they kind of really get that place going. And it was, it was honestly shocking a little bit. I was not expecting that to happen. So I don't, I really have no idea what happened or, um, what they're saying was the big reason. Uh, but you know, I definitely thought more people would have come out for the games and, um, yeah, I think it was, it's just tough. You know, the, the, the crazy stat that, that really threw me off was the, what was it? They first scored the first run in like 30 something innings and, in, and in playoffs, uh, almost tied like the, an old, an old Dodgers record or something. So, um, you know, with, with the, what kind of offense they had all year and the kind of the players that were doing so well, you thought they were going to um, really kind of uh, hit the gas and like go into the series that way. And it just kind of just didn't seem to go their way. So, um, uh, you know, not really the way they wanted to exit. I haven't really reached out to anybody too yet. I didn't want to like do it when the, the wound was so fresh. I wanted to wait a couple of days before reaching out to guys and see how, <laughs> how everything happened. And now back to foul territory. Exactly. All right, back on FT Live. We keep rolling through. Braun, Frazier, and Eric Kratz, and we're looking ahead. Let's hit another series. Twins, Astros. Now, this one was interesting to me. So, obviously, they faced each other this year, and then Twins won four of six. I don't take much into regular season series. Like, remember, we went over Marlins, Phillies. I got to go back and do the homework also. I mean, Marlins were missing their best starters. So, on this front, Minnesota hasn't faced Verlander, Framber, or Christian Javier crazy. so far this year. Uh -oh. Yeah, crazy. So as a player also, when you're heading into a series like that, does that matter to you? Like, what's the muscle memory status? If you were like, yo, I saw JV this year, no matter what, if you got a hit or even if you didn't, you're like, all right, I, I feel like, you know, I at least got to see him this year is a complete crap and doesn't mean anything. It means a lot, especially for me, a guy that never played. If I'm facing a guy in the – playoffs that I've actually faced, that means a lot. You can look at all the video you want, and this is why bench players will never get the same stats as starters. They'll never be able to get those numbers because it's just so hard to consistently not see somebody and then go in there and pitchers are too good and get in there and get get have success. So yeah, absolutely, that's a big thing. And I think the four out of the six wins – is a bigger deal out of the division than in the division. So you talked about the Phillies Marlins. Mm -hmm. It was a uh, seven to six. I think the Marlins won seven games. Inner division games are going to be just back and forth, back and forth. When you're out of the division, you just don't have the same amount of information as you do for your inner division guys. And most of that comes down to exactly what you just said. You haven't seen these guys or you have seen the pitchers. You can face dude, Back-to-back -back starts, and you you know you might face Verlander, and then you go to the you go somewhere else on the road, and you come back, to, and then you go to Houston, you face Verlander again. That's why you see guys strikeout numbers go down the second time because they're just you're giving more information to the hitters. And I'll leave it at this: regular season Verlander is totally different than playoff oh. for Verlander. Regular season Valdez, regular season uh, Christian Javier. You know what I mean, like. These guys have been there before. Look at Evaldi. Look at what Evaldi did. Oof. Well, hey, then to hey, me, bro. they're not trying in the regular season. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <kidding>. stirring <sighs> the pot. Hey, listen. Well, why are they different? Because it's electric. It's it, something just clicks when you're in, when you're a professional athlete, and you are good at what you do in one aspect of it, and now it's blown up ten times out of proportion. All of a sudden, it's like zoom. I can lock in even more. It, it's hard to explain. Uh, the good athletes turn into great, and the average athletes turn into good. Like, it, it's hard to explain. Just, the, way, the, way, the way I explain it, <clears throat> it's my Josh Tolley theory. T-hole. Like, an absolute gem of a person. We were hanging out with Roy Halladay. He goes, hey, yes. 
seven for nine against him or seven for 13 against him. I was like, wow. I was like, that's legit. Yeah. I go, I bet there's no RBIs on that ledger. <sighs> He's like, what? No chance. We went in there. It was before a game. He goes, oh, dang it. Good pitchers change what they do in big situations. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean they're not trying. You know, Never. It just means when you get a guy on base, you're going to see the best pitchers, they're dialing it up. You Darvish, when he was the man, that breaking ball was completely different than the one you saw, even in a 2-2 count with nobody on. And so that's what you're seeing, and that's what experience level, and that's what, yes, the playoffs, they give you just that, they give you that superpower, and it's, it's something that's awesome. Let me finish this. You're going to see maybe a Verlander, you know, get second and third, one out or, or less than two mm-hmm. outs. He's going to get a strike out. He's going to get a pop. And you're going to see two or three times, they're going to look back in the game like, damn it. If only I hit a ground ball to shortstop. Nope, I struck out that bump. Because these guys just step it up, and they'll win those games three to two. I'm telling you, it happens all the time. Just yes or no. <coughs> Do the Twins have a chance? Yes. No. Uh, I'm not going to answer. I don't feel like it. No, I'll answer. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think so. I think they have a chance. But yes. I think it's, it's pretty slight. Um, but they have a chance. I want to see Carlos Correa go off against his old team. I just want to see what we'll that see. looks like. I don't think he will. No? Okay. No. We'll Ooh. see. Picks come. Super real. Super real right there by Schneids. Like, he's he's not ducking it. He's not trying to – to me, I think he's, you know, he's putting himself – he's running himself over with the bus. But – I want to really ask Tingler this when he comes on because he was a manager. He was, you know, he was a big league manager recently with this, as people say, the quote, new era of baseball. It's not a new era of baseball. I truly believe that the game plan that they put out there, that they thought about, that I texted Schneider about coming on this show, you know, the day before they started the playoffs. And he's like, dude, I would love to. The meetings are all day long. So those meetings are not because, man, I wonder how we can screw this up. No, they wanted to win. And that's the same new era, old era. They wanted to win these games. I just think the game plan was flawed because there is a looking glass type of way of looking at it. And there is a actual, we're in the mud. We're doing this right now. Not in the mud like Jerry DePoto said, but we're in the mud. We're fighting this out. Holy cow. Jose is dealing right now. He has eight swing and misses on 25 of his sw- of their swings, of the Twins' 25 swings, eight swing and misses. That is incredible through 47 pitches. That's a great game on 100 pitches. You got to let it, you got to let it ride, but you got to like, let your manager be able to let it ride. And teams also have that intermediary in the dugout that's like, "Oh, well, I'm the help- helpful analytic guy that's also helping you on the field." Everybody needs to be together in the situation, but also understand that you got to give your manager more leeway in that situation. And Schneids most likely is going to stay laid in front of the bus because there's nobody else that he can that he can throw under the bus because all those guys are protected by the shield of not having to be in the limelight of being the manager. And now back to foul territory. All right, so first off, poll results, if we should reseed, um, the answer, according to the people, is no. They're like, no, we like the bracket. So, okay. Half said um, yes or it doesn't matter, but the other half said no. So Interesting. The people have spoken. Let's do our BetMGM locks. We have a huge weekend of ball. Like These aren't going to be our official locks because we don't have a game today. We're still waiting on probables and all that, so we'll get back to the official official for the money bags on Monday. And also want to throw this out there for your 1500 first bet offer, $1,500 first bet offer. Uh, you use the code FAL when you download the BetMGM Sportsbook app on iOS or Android or visit BetMGM.com for new users. You sign up and deposit at least 10 bucks 
into your account and place your first wager and receive up to $1,500 back in bonus bets if your bet loses. And if the bet does lose, your bonus bets will be available once your wager is settled. And once you've placed a qualifying bet, um, that's when all the magic happens. Gambling problem or concern? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Okay, so unofficial, but obviously official. Like I still expect you to throw down on it, but what are you looking at this weekend? You got a lock? I'm going somewhere. You, you'll never guess where I'm going. Hmm. And I wrote it in there and nobody read the rundown. So I, if you're sarcastic, then the you're rundown. going to the Phillies game. No. You're going to a different game. I'm going to a different game. Diamondbacks? I'm going to the Arizona. Um, no, not Arizona. Astros Twins game. And? You're Don Alvarez for a, for a walk. Plus 105. Wow. Plus one oh five. Oh, look at your look at look at you. You're taking you're taking his fifteen hundred dollar bonus bets and thinking about putting it down, aren't <laughs> that you? That includes intentional. Yes, it does. Continue. It's um, a good call. I like that. I'm telling that for sure. I will post that. I'm riding the wave here. I'm going Philly underdogs on the road, money mm-hmm. line. I think it's like plus one eighty. No, plus one sixty last I checked. Yeah. Minus line, minus two hundred. Philly's on the road. When you're hot, you're hot. I'm gonna ride the wave. Ride the wave. Wow. That was for Eric, too, as well. Mm. So, appreciate they you. take down Spencer Strider? Appreciation station? No. It's going to be an under for the first five innings. But they oh, win this, the game. This guy's on a roll. He's t- I made my pick, and now he said no. You cut, cut it out. No, no, no. No, 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 no. No, I'm saying runs are going to be. complimenting. He asked, he, asked, he asked if they're going to take down Strider. No. I don't think they're going to take down Strider. They're going to take gonna down take their bullpen. Down. No, they're going to take him down. They're going to take Strider down? Down to funky so? town, baby. Really? I, 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 I'm riding the wave, brother. Stick with the money line. Stick with the money I, line. I That's didn't it. say I wasn't changing. I'm yep. saying they're going to get to him. No. Oh, first five. Oof. If you take them first five, it's probably I, even more steep, right? I love first five. That Where would you be, going? Philly's first five would be wild. Yeah, that'd be big monies. For me, I'm going to say the Diamondbacks take game one. I think Clayton's you know, still a little bit hurt. He's, he's reaching for it. I know the offense is good on the L.A. side, but I think the Diamondbacks give a little punch. So we'll see you on the Foul Territory YouTube channel now. doing ft live hour number two trevor may is going to join us very soon and also jackson Job, one of the top prospects in the sport is out in arizona playing in the fall league we'll talk to the tigers big pitching prospect coming up too so big pitching conversations in hour number two by the way adam jones was on the show yesterday and then soon after the show he caught that tweet with the fan graphs projections (laughs) <laughs> the the Orioles and the fan graphs projections yeah. are just epic. And it's really just like good content at this point. But the projections didn't have the Orioles doing much damage this year in the regular season. And Brandon Hyde acknowledged that and put a little bulletin board material together for it. So now fast forward to the postseason and guess which team they say has the lowest percentage chance of winning the World Series. Ooh. The Orioles, yeah. The O's and Stroh's and Natty Bows. So Adam's pissed, okay? Um, We'll show the tweet a little bit later on, but he just said, I'll say it. He said, let's slap them fan graphs, slap dicks in the face yet again. (laughs) Very Adam line. We we don't drop Homer enough on him. 
We should drop uh, more Homer right. on you're him. You're right. We should. Yeah, you're He's right. very Homer. He is very Homer. Yeah. He doesn't shy from it, though. But no, I love it. I love is. Homerism. I love Homerism in the playoffs. You got some Homer in you. Yeah, but I got, I got too many teams. Yeah, true. <laughs> this guy's got He's some teams, for 13 different teams on his resume. Let's get to him right now. We're excited to have Trevor May. You can follow him. I am Trevor May on Twitter and joining FT Live for the first time. Trevor, how you doing, dude? Happy off season. What's up, guys? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Really good. How was the year? It was uh it was interesting. I'm I'm sure you guys were following along, but it was uh it was it was a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun for sure. What made it fun? What was what was the cuz most people are like, "Oh, A's, blah blah blah." What made it fun? Cuz you're out there, you're out there grinding it out. You're the dude they're bringing in to close these games out. I mean, uh, had a little bit of success. Yeah, as you guys know, that's always a, uh, a large part of the uh, fun equation. But uh, not, honestly, the group of guys, uh, I signed here, like, I, I said this right when I signed. I, you know, I knew the deal. I, I know, I, I heard the stories about ownership, and I know how it's, you know, and all this, all the stuff from the guys who played there before. And um, I was just looking forward to seeing a group of young dudes, you know, guys that are going to be the core of that team moving into the future and just seeing how that develops. I, I had, I was fortunate enough to be kind of all on that ride with the twins, with the Kepler, Sano, Polanco group, uh, Buxton, all those guys came up and that was a lot of fun. And then um, over in the Mets, I got so used to some young guys. So it became like something that I, one of my favorite parts about the game, like uh, helping young guys get a little better, just watching them get, uh, become big leaguers. So, um, and that's all there is over here. So uh <laughs> It was good though, like just watching everybody go from the day one to the last day, like night and day. Even though I know I know the record was, but uh, guys maturing and coming in their own a little bit, it's it's always a fulfilling thing when you're part of that. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, I think of guys like Nick Allen, who I played played with as well. He's one of the best slick field and infielders I've seen. You know, He's out of nasty. young kid coming. He's absolutely beast. Um, my question to you is, you know, it's it's fun playing Major League Baseball. We get it. The whole thing going on with the A's. You know, talk to us just a little bit about it. I mean, it, it had to have been bad at some points with all everything going on. How was the food? I mean, everything that happened during the season. Just explain <laughs> to us, you know, what it was like being a ball player over there. I mean, uh, the food was good, man. I, for, I'm going to be honest. There's a lot of things that I was like, I didn't anticipate having these every day, and uh, uh, this is phenomenal. I mean, from the food to, like, you know, the A's stay in nicer hotels a lot of, most of the time than the Mets did. I'll be honest. The A's probably stay in the nicest – total it's only Ritz only four seasons everywhere uh and I'd never been on a team and I was on the Mets and I'd never been on a team <laughs> that has done that so it, uh that was cool um you know uh yeah and, and since the CBA stuff changed and like you know the way that food's handled and stuff they kind of had no choice so yeah <laughs> it's it's it, it, yeah. it was really good I, I think that uh one thing that strikes you if you're if you play for the Oakland A's is how much everyone who works there cares um and how close knit of a family. I mean, baseball is a family and every, every stadium's got their group, but like everyone who's who works in the Coliseum has worked there for 30 years. Every single one of them. Like the new, I think the newest security guard was hired like nine years ago, which is crazy to me. Yeah. Uh, so like, but it's so close knit and seeing the same people every day and, and you're all kind of in it together. I don't know. There was something really cohesive about it all and you feel welcome. Um, so, uh, and I think that's one of the best, one of the places that I think does that better than maybe anywhere. Yeah, so you definitely saw why the why the other teams that were good were like, oh, I love playing here. You know, you talk to Eric exactly. Sovar, you talk to Matt Chapman, that kind of thing. But I need one story where you're like, like the possum in the like the possum in the press <laughs> box kind of story. Was there one where like Brandon Moss always told me the story about how they were flushing the toilets and what was going down the toilets was coming up the drain. So you can't use that one if that happened or when yeah. that happened. But I need a, I need one where you're like, whoa, didn't know I'd see that. For, like, like that's the most A's thing I've ever seen, like that type of right. thing. Um, right. I feel like I was saying that pretty regularly. <laughs> uh, it was mostly – it was always like bullpen related. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there is <laughs> – so this is me. This is my thing. So when I get to the bullpen, I got to the bullpen every day at four or then fourth at four, four, at four inning in the fourth inning in the game. So I'm walking down at the same time every day and I have my seat, you know, like everyone's kind of got their seats and everyone's already in their seats when I get there. And there's this chair, this, this like chair from a high school that was broke as shit, like just broke as hell. And 
unsittable and it kept appearing in my like every day that chair was there i threw it in the trash next day it's bad it's like groundhog's day it was there over and over again i'm like can we not get a new chair and i literally go can i get a chair that 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 is uh that is uh works and they're like there are no other chairs so I was told there's, <laughs> we can't go into one of the 9,000 storage rooms that have not been opened in a decade and just find a chair that doesn't break when I sit in it. And they're like, no. Nope. So it became this joke where everybody, like, no matter where that chair was, the guys would find it. They would put it there every day. And then I'd freak out, throw it down the thing, go go steal someone else's chair, make them stand up, and then take a knee while I sat will, in the nice chair. <laughs> it happened every that, day. I'm like, this that. is the most A's thing ever. <laughs> Will that chair be there next year? hundred percent. There's no way. Now, now it's like it's probably got my name written on it somewhere. <laughs> but that was our daily. That was my daily, like Jesus your moment every thing. day. Your daily grind. Yeah. Hey, yeah. so you have an uh, interest in electrical music? You, you use the su- uh, pseudonym DJ Hey Beef. Ele- wait, 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 hold up, hold up. Well, yeah. electrical. We that's like a, oh, that's electronic. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, electronic. I'm a big EDM guy, and Jeez, I heard electrical. I bought, and... Hey, shoot me dead right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, that's like that's like a dude coming on here, and be like, "You guys are really major league baseballers, aren't you?" <laughs> the MLB. <laughs> the MLB. You, you see something you just think it's what's in your mind. Well, electronic. Also, that's not your. That's not. It's your not music. my vibe, but I want to get to know it a little more. Tell us about it, brother. Oh, electronic music, uh, also known as EDM. Also known as techno to a lot of people. Techno is a subset of EDM, by the way, if anyone's wondering. Yeah, I've always liked electronic music. I've liked it since uh, I was even in high school, like in 08 and 07, 06, like even the even the 2000 stuff. And then it got really, really popular in the United States in like the late 2010s. Uh, the early to mid, late 2010s, sorry, um, which I was in my early 20s. So I was hanging out at frat parties a lot. They needed DJs. Yes. I was like, I can do that. And uh, I like that music. I was the one already like... I hate to say burning the CDs and then, or bringing the iPod, um, <laughs> making the, now making the playlist in Spotify. That's me. That was always my job. So then why as well spin it live? And then it just kind of got a mind of its own. That's how I get, I get into stuff. And it's just like, it's just, now, I spend now are you too playing much money. This before, be, you playing this before the games and stuff to the, to the team like that or no? I did some stuff. Uh, actually, in New York, uh, Lindor bought me some speakers, and then I bought the turntables just to have there. And I, I maybe used them twice, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it, was, it was it was really fun those two times. I realized like, oh, when I'm here, I actually have other stuff to do. I can't just like work on mixing. But uh, at home, actually, I bust mine out. It's like that was my big league purchase. Turntables were like, I got to the show and I was like, this is the thing I want, so I got it. It's nice. the first thing I bought. Um, so I'll have those forever. Uh, but yeah, I bust those out like every off season for like a month, put them out on the some table, people, playing four or five times and put them away. Some people get a Breitling watch. T may got himself some turntables. Hell yeah, bro. baby. I like it. Do, who, do you I'm have there. a favorite by the way, uh, that you listen to favorite, um, DJ producer. Yeah. It changes all the time. Uh, one that keeps popping back is always like uh high, low or Oliver Heldens, depending on which moniker you're using, uh, with yep. this stuff. Um, but I've been on a drum and bass kick big time lately. So Jason Status has just and Boo is B O U is his name. Those two guys mm-hmm. have been just or those two groups have been just doing it for me. Everything they're releasing is awesome. This is this. Nah, is, I mean, I'm going to slam Scott this weekend. Is, this is right you're out. making Scott, Scott blush right no, now. No, no, I just I never in... get to actually hear names like this with conversations. I'm, there are some other players more like on the popular side where it's like, oh, I like Kygo or something. But Trevor's going or Tiesto, you know? Right, exactly. Tiesto, you know, those kind of dudes. But he's going underground. Little, he's going. He's going in the woods deep. with you. Yeah, yeah, the electronic woods. More, more up my alley here. So, um, Trevor, um, I know you put out a recent uh, pod, right? May uh may contain action is the pod. I've heard it before. Uh want to be able to give everyone a little uh insight on what you got going on there. So um what do you talk about and do you enjoy doing it? Because we're doing this every day. Yeah, uh that is one of my podcasts, uh the one that I've probably done the most. It's a friend of mine, uh his name's Action Jackson on Twitch. We met met each other through streaming video games, so it started like with interviewing other streamers, talking about people in the streaming area or in the streaming world, uh, Twitch and things like we've had Tim the Tatman on, Ninja on, like guys like that. Uh, and then a couple times it's been with uh, changed a little bit based on what we're into right now. Though uh, what we find ourselves talking about constantly is like nostalgic, uh, like 
uh, old content we used to, to watch, like so old shows, old me- old movies, old like toys, old food, like the Nickelodeon group. Uh, so like our first episode coming back a couple weeks ago was uh, we went back and watched Ren and Stimpy again for the first time since we were like nine, and we're like, this show is insane. So like it's basically go back and watch things that you watch as kids as an adult and then re- that's cool. evaluate where we're at. So we just actually recorded an episode right before this. Uh, we went back and watched Wedding Crashers. So yes. wow, that's a that's a oh, it was a good episode, boys. It was a good one. So me love that that'll be ah. that'll be love later. Exactly, me love. One of our one of our sections is the quotes, and we spent like twenty minutes on quotes. There's so, so many from that movie. Let, so let me ask you this before you go on. Think of a movie. Like in your head, that has the best quotes. Can you can you name like what movie you go to? Like everybody uses these quotes. It happens all the time. It's it's wedding it's wedding crashers. Is it? I say I, 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 I say five wedding crashers quotes a day. Probably really. See, I'm going I'm going with Major League, but I think Major League oh, has Major a League's lot of good game. ones in there. I do the too high every single game every day. I'll, I'll, this guy hits it up and like it's too high. There's no yeah, way. It's, it's way a too bit high. outside. No, they, there's some good. Yeah. Ones. There's some good. Ones. Yeah, but that I think wedding crashers is your. Is your generation? My mine, mine yeah. is Dumb and Dumber. Oh, oh yeah, yeah true. another classic. Fits you. I would well, say that's too. yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> extremely quotable as well. And, and old school, and old school, yes, old but, school. A lot of Will Ferrell movies are just it is. loaded with quotes. Mm. They star. Hey, Fair. was this on one of your pods, or I'm trying to remember, or on Twitter talking AI? Because obviously you're a big tech guy. Um, did you talk yeah. about it on a pod, or was that on Twitter? Yeah, we're talking about it in the, in the pod um, okay. way, way, way too much. I constantly have to be like, guys, we get it. We really like it. Let's move on, please. we got to talk about what it <laughs> happened again this episode. Sorry, guys. Um, maybe we'll just do a different pod for that, but there's only about 10,000 of those now. So That community is obsessed right now with that topic, yeah. which is interesting. Um, so question for you um, about something else you've been talking about over the last couple of days on Twitter a lot. We've spoken to – we've had like 200 – player guest appearances on this show this year. And I would say at least 10 times the word sweeper has come up. And I think almost every time a dude's like, fuck the sweeper. Like that's, that's not the word we use, whatever. So can, can you take us through your thought process on this? Cause I know you've been kicking it around on social and like, I'll just give you a name. For example, Chris Bassett, he's on, he's like, no, it's not a sweeper. It's a slider. So you give me your take and what you've experienced this year. Cause I know it's been a nice pitch for the uh, repertoire too. I mean, I can't believe Bass isn't behind it because it's just another button he can put on a stupid thing on his belt. Like, that guy loves having <laughs> – come on, Bass. It's a new pitch you can just have now. Like, wh- why are you so against it? Uh, he's – yeah, God, don't get me started on Bass. <laughs> I love I, – Chris Bass is one of my favorites, but my God, he can be so stubborn as hell about certain things. Um, but I, I think that I like the the – I love the sweeper. I love probably because uh, they're like, hey, you should try this. And then I tried it. It was really good right away. And I was like, I'm throwing this now. And that's kind of how it worked, um, which I feel like is why pitches are getting named is because guys are able to learn them quick. Like we're figuring out really good ways to teach it and learn it and design it. And so then it gets its own name. I think of that. But I think that's what's happening. So guys threw sweepers. Ottavino's thrown a sweeper for his whole career. Um, True. Um, but but distinguish uh, uh, it's the way the physics work on the ball is now how we're, and that's kind of boring for people to hear. So like, they don't want to hear it, but for us um, having that distinction is important when we're trying to make decisions. Like I, I throw a gyro, a slider, a depth slider and a sweeper. I throw them both. So me calling them different pitches is important for the catcher because they're very different. Uh, So that's my context. But of course, why, you know, but but like, let me be very clear. A sweeper is very different than your run-of-the-mill slider that most guys throw with the more depth than horizontal. 100%. Way different. Same thing that a cutter is different than a slider. Come on, Bass. I'm going sti- yes. to stick with Bassett here for a little bit because I watched him last year being in a booth with the Phillies in New York. This dude led the league in shakes. He would shake. Is he going to be the first? Is he going to be the first person to ever shake himself off with the pitch com? On his, on the belt, like he'll hit it and be like, "No." I think Granky already did that. Granky, <laughs> Granky, he's, like, already, he's uh, like, "No, no, no, redo." <laughs> no, no, sorry, wrong button. Yeah, he did that in spring, I think, which is so so Granky. I want to stay with uh, pitching. We talk about you brought up um, 
talking about the pitch clock, how it gave you anxiety and stuff like that during the year. Um, can you just, you know, go into that just a little bit and explain, you know, so people can understand that, you know, this sport is very hard to do and other things that come involved, you know, it, it takes a toll on you a little bit. Yeah. Um, um, just to be clear, uh, it, it exact it like made my anxiety a thousand times like more intense because I always have anxiety, but, uh, so basically how I operated and, and, and I think Bass is another guy who thought this way too, after talking to him is like being able to like hit the e-break on the inning when you need it and like, be like, all right, let's center in, like feel, feel this like pressure and then use it to put it into your pitches. Like get, that always gave me a little umph on the fastball and always like big spots. I, I felt like my was backed into a corner, which then I used, but then when the speed, when it sped up, I realized how long it took me to kind of wind that up. And I w- and then I found, found that I was unable to do it ever. I was like, I can't go get extra here because I don't have time. And so it felt like I was going through the motions because things were going so quickly. And that was wildly frustrating. So frustrating because I'm like, oh, no, my, like my superpower. I didn't know until there was a clock on me. And so I had to find a new way to do it. So that's, that's what I spent my whole hiatus doing, like pra- throwing pens and just like putting timers on myself. And like I had a buzzing – I had like my watch going off every 15 seconds. Um, I was trying to get myself as close to, to like get my internal clock going. And uh, well, the best piece of advice I got was David Robertson didn't say this to me, but Ottavino said that it's what he does. And he just stopped looking at the clock completely. He's like, I'm just going to chance it. If I get a thing, I get a thing, but, or get a, like a violation, mm-hmm. I get a violation. And as soon as he said that, I was like, Oh, I'll just not look at it anymore. And then it just became a non-issue like immediately. So, really? You, did, you didn't, you didn't look at it. You never were like, I wonder. Well, there's a couple times where I'm like doing a long hold or something with a guy at first. Like I know I'm holding longer on purpose, and then I'll like peek at it real quick. But there's one. Let's go. Um, You're in control of it. I'm in control of it, and then I also yeah. went back to the windup. A lot of guys did that. Uh, back to the windup, so you could just take the step, stop the clock. Now you don't worry about it anymore. So that helped a lot too. Yeah, on, on your rhythm. Yeah. No, I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. Hey, have you ever been on the Phantom IL? Um, we've spoken about it before or, or your thoughts on it because, you know, today the news popped up, um, Billy Epler, who's part of the Mets, um, is being investigated for that. And we were kind of laughing cause we're like, all right, let's see what this actually looks like. Cause you know, MLB, the phantom IL has been a thing for a very long time. This better be something serious. Otherwise someone's just what trying to be a snitch. <laughs> yeah. It, that's interesting. Um, yeah, this is pretty common. Like, it's pretty well known. I've never been on the Phantom. Um, it's something that you see way, 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 way more in the minors, I feel like. Um, and now they have deve- devel- what is it, developmental lists. So, like, yep. they just, like, yep. made it legal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's that list where you can, you can be there and you can do all the stuff. You just can't play. That's the Phantom. Yep. That's what it is. <laughs> um, the big league, as you can imagine, uh, for people at home, you can imagine people, like, they don't put people on the Phantom very often in the big leagues because you're paying them a lot of money. And so just having someone hanging out and you're paying, you, might, you would rather than be in AAA hanging out if you can, because uh, they're making less money, which sounds sucks for them and sucks for a lot of people, but it's the way it is. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. Billy, like I don't, uh, frankly, I played for Billy for a year. I don't remember any, anything really out, out of the order. Anything that I noticed was like, that's weird. And like, wow, it just all felt kind of normal. So it is going to be interesting to see like, what are we, what, what exactly are we talking about here? Yeah, exactly. Um, and I like how it's like the phantom. I, it's a good word. You know what I'm usage. saying? Like that, <clears throat> that should show how common it is too, where you're like, oh, yeah, he's going on the phantom. Right. Everybody knows what that means. Exactly. Well, it used to be like turf toe or, or tennis yeah. elbow. Like they used to say turf toe. Like no one knows what turf toe yeah. is. Now yeah, they can't exactly. do that. They can't use turf toe because they know that means phantom. So they can't yeah, use it exactly. anymore. It's like outlaw. Hey, hey. And if you, turf toe is no joke. No, don't it, it, don't oh, give a man turf toe. Turf toes like it's like a hangnail. Like you sound like a pansy terrible. for having it, but when you get it, you're like, I don't even, I don't even want this. I don't want <laughs> it. It hurts. Listen, if you're on the Phantom DL as a catcher, you are gonna in the minor leagues, you're gonna be used and abused from morning to night that that day. Oh, you you're, those? they're they're I flying don't. in. They're flying in big leaguers for me to catch pens at nine in the morning to fly them out. And then you go to the game and you're on the fan. I mean, Phantom IL in the minor leagues is no joke. That's, that's the jungle down there. <laughs> Trevor, you don't know about the jungle. You don't know about new Britain rock cats jungle anymore. 
Like you're. Oh, I knew about it then. We didn't even have you a batting cage. You had, someone burned it bat- down, and they just didn't rebuild it. Your that batting, your batting cage was a was a tarp. It was a oh, it was a metal God. pop two tarp. Yeah. Anyway, New Britain, another that's another level. That's for the they don't have a team anymore. Thank pod. God. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Hey, for the off season, how much are you going to watch these games the next few weeks? Um, do you care? Oh. Do you watch? Are you locked in? Oh, I I love playoff baseball. Like it's we always talk trash all year about like I ain't gonna watch baseball games ever when I'm done playing and then immediately you're watching playoff <laughs> games and breaking them down. I do like watch parties sometimes and like just kind of I I try to romo it and guess pitches and guess what we're gonna do and guess the score. And, uh, so I, I enjoy that kind of stuff. I I like kind of going along with guys that I played against and played with and now I've played with like half the players in the playoffs. So it's like. There's someone to root for, and so I was like yep. rooting for the Twins to break the break the streak because I'm part of the streak. I'm glad that's over. Uh, thank God. Um, and uh, now I'm rooting for him to beat the Astros because we really want everyone to beat the Astros over here. <laughs> <laughs> do you feel Do you feel yourself actually rooting? Because when I played and I wasn't in the playoffs, I would sit there and I would go, "Yeah, you know, I, I kind of want the I kind of want." the Rays to win. I know, I know five guys that are on the Rays and then the Rays start winning. I'm like, I was a little jealous. I'm a little like, I'm not <laughs> sure if I want, like, I, I know what you're saying. Do you, do you have that feeling or you're still, you're still active? Cause now I can root for teams. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a little bit. I, I think that, yeah, there's part of me like I could do that or like, I, yeah, exactly. So I got a confession. I, I came home last year. We came home a little bit earlier, uh, after getting eliminated from the wild card and, uh, I went to the Mariner that 18 inning Mariners game. I took a couple of my buddies who really wanted to go. I was like, I can, I'll get us tickets. We'll, we'll go. And it, we we left in the top of the 17 because I was I was like, I'm gonna. This is awful. You know how many innings I've watched this year, and I'm here. What are we doing? Uh, but I went to the game, and the whole time I was just like, that's what he's doing. This is what's going on there, and just like talking, telling them because I'm like, I know. And they're like, Trevor, we get it. <laughs> We've seen you play against the Mariners. I'm like, I'm oh, sorry, sorry. I'm just, I'm just saying. I've been out there. I go out there all the time. I'm always out there. So, see that door right there? I walk through that door all the time. <laughs> so you Look felt, how cool so, I am. so you felt, you felt a little, you were a little jealous. You were a little insecure. A little you needed to, you needed to like tell them, like, wasn't my fault. Wasn't my fault. I would, I would have thrown, I would have yeah. thrown a sweeper there. The sweeper. <laughs> you thrown a sweeper. What are you doing? It's obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys do that at games? Like, if you go to a game now. No, I, no. I, I mean, not really. No, do you? You definitely do it. <laughs> yeah, you do. Hundred percent. Listen, well, I when you're announcing the game, you, you're like, oh man, you right? Know? You just did. You yeah. just called games. Yeah, I'm usually spot on, so I don't miss the pitches. <laughs> all right. <laughs> no, I love. I love I, my oldest. My oldest and I, when we watch a game, we'll try to guess to see what pitch. You know, see what pitch are coming, and he'll say something. I'll be like, I wouldn't go there because yeah. of this. And he's like, well, how can I even argue with you, Dad? Like, yeah. of course you know. I'm like, no, that's not right. I said, I'm just telling you what I know. That doesn't mean it's going to happen in this situation. So when he gets it right, when I'm like, I just wouldn't go breaking ball, and it's a breaking ball and it's whacked, he's like, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah I knew it. I knew it. He should have. <laughs> you know, so I think that's fun. That is fun. Hey, um, Trevor, if you were commissioner of baseball for a day and you could do anything and, you know, commissioner is really CEO, so it doesn't have to be a rule change. It could be a business change. It could be something crazy you want to implement. What's something that you think would be cool, entertaining, good for the game, good for business, whatever? Uh, this one's very specific. I've actually put a lot of thought on this. Um, the ballpark app or the MLB app, I would love, I would focus really he- heavily on the customization of it. So like being able to pick different camera angles, being able to pick different broadcasts and like mix and match how you want it to the broadcast to be. Um, I know there's a little bit of that, but uh, it'd be cool to like, for example, be able just to patch into the Mariners, like cam that's going around the whole time and just be in that the whole time because it's on, like they just switched to it. Right. And they, they have the ability to do this stuff. So it's like, um, I know some of it's in the works, uh, but I thought I think it would be cool to be able to like uh, uh, do that and and like try to give people different ways to consume the game outside of just seeing it from behind on plate and listening to the same two two people every time or or picking like especially if it's team that's not your team like if you don't 
like either group of commentators or whatever, you can listen to the radio or whatever it is. Um, I think that'd be pretty cool. What about, can I couple off of that? Because I love that idea. Can Crash I couple like off of this, that? By the way, like off the yeah. he was like, I definitely oh. fist pumped. Like, I love this idea because we are in a customization world. What if there was cameras for each player and you go on the app and you're like, boom, I'm a Phillies fan. I love Bryce Harper. I'm going to watch the game in split screen and I'm going to pay $4.99 a month and I'm going to have a split screen of just Bryce Harper with some type of audio of hearing him. Not, not saying that sick. the audio is in, but like you can still see the game, but now you're like, or more applicable, hey, I just, you know, I'm starting to play second base. I want to watch Bryson Stott move around. It's just a camera just on him, and you can still watch the game. That would be I, – I think that would be awesome. And I, I know that a lot of the hang-up for that stuff, especially if it's like a POV thing, so like yep. it'd be guys wearing cameras. So then the PA would be like, well, we need to be paid for that. And then MLB is like, we don't like paying you stuff for stuff. And now we have an issue. Oh. So like that's where we come down to. Also, the way MLB owns – I've done a lot of research on this too. The way uh, the media rights for the MLB work, they're very, 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 very rigid. Um, and they, they, they've done a good job of locking that stuff up. So um, when, when like I get suggested to players, and you guys know this just as well as anybody else, players are like, what do I get? And usually it's nothing. So uh, there would have to be something. Guys would have to want to do it. But I think more guys are coming around like Julio Rodriguez would just wear it. Like I would just wear it. Honestly, sure. I want to be mic'd up every time I pitch so that I can be like, hey guys, what should I throw here? And then when it when it when it doesn't go well, but what what do you guys what are you thinking? How dare you? Like what if, I, what I if, gotta save this game. How dare you pick that pitch? <laughs> what if you're in what if you're what if you're you you go back to your 2014 days and you're starting and you're in the 47th pitch of a wild card game, like and you're mic'd up and you're like, what why is why is my manager coming? <laughs> guys, guys, hang on, Hold hang on. on. Don't don't listen to what I'm saying. What would <laughs> what would what do you have to say? Oh God, I yeah, I don't know. I I, I don't know how well I'd be able to uh, keep that frustration down. I, I think that you know uh, if Snell were watching that, he had some P Ooh. PTSD flashbacks a little <laughs> oh, bit too. Yeah. So. Yeah, it, th those situations are crazy, especially when that's the plan. You follow the plan. The plan doesn't work out. And then now all we're doing is talking about the plan. Even if the plan worked, we wouldn't mention the plan. So it's just one of those things. Um, but I'm, I'm always a proponent of like, just guys got stuff going, man. Just like, that's the romantic part about the game. Like just let someone do something that they, they, they might, you might not have projected them to do once in a while. That's all I'm saying. Cause I think that's fun. And at the end of the day, it's a sport where people play against other people. So it's the same thing with like the ABS. Like, do we really need ABS or having guys mess up calls? Is that a good thing for baseball? It, I think it is. I think yeah. it's yelling at an umpire Agreed. is part of the game. It's a good, yeah. que it's a good Agreed. question. Agreed. But, but, but you said, you know, you, you alluded to it too. That was a decision that was made ahead of time. So you were told as the starting pitcher in the bull, in the, in the clubhouse, Hey, you know, this is something that's going to come. What's the conversation if somebody – if somebody tells you that, if somebody says, hey, this might happen, are you like, are you flipping the chair in front of you? Are you like, oh, okay, coach? Yeah, I think when it comes down to that, like, you know, you guys have played playoff games. You're like, whatever we need to do to win. Like, that's the, you're like, you, you like, don't, you, you're like, it's not going to matter because I'm going to be shoving. It's like, you don't really even think that it's going to be a problem. And then you realize that you are shoving and it happens anyways. <laughs> You're like, oh, like this was happening no matter what. Um, I think that that's probably – knowing Jose, too, and playing with him for several years, like, yeah, he was definitely like, whatever you need. Like, whatever you need, whatever you think is best, I'm going to give you everything I got. And uh, and it's really easy kind of in hindsight to look back and be like, man, you should let me in. You know what I mean? So I guarantee you that's how it went down. But after the fact, yeah, I'm frustrated, especially when I, when I like, got into that zone and then was just ripped out of it. Immediately would that would that would, and then watching it just not then watching yourself get eliminated. That's just I, I that would be that would be very very frustrating for a very long time for sure. All right, so one last one. I saw the picture in the back. Okay, you were at the you were in Oakland. They're moving to Vegas. Mm -hmm. What are the better what is what's a better chance? Oakland succeeding in Vegas or Oakland eventually moving to Isengard? 
<laughs> I'll, I'll say succeeding in Vegas because uh, a lot of those guys that I played with are going to probably be on that Vegas team, and uh, I want them to succeed. Um, <laughs> I, 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 from a bit, you know, I try not to worry too much about the business side because I'm uh, frankly getting really tired of hearing it's a business over and over again. Uh, so, you know, do what you will take the team where you're going to take it at the end of the day, there's no control, but like, you know, like I said before, it's the same thing with the, and to, like the, pro- the projectability of everything and everything everywhere all the time. Now we're just projecting value. We're not actually looking at where it is what's happening in front of us anymore. We're just predicting the future constantly. Um, we just look at what Jerry DePoto said the other day. It's just <laughs> like, at some point you just got to like go with how it feels at the moment. Um, and I, like, I, 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 I loved Oakland fans playing against them. I, even with uh, how many were there this year, that reverse boycott game was f- absolutely electric. Uh, like they show like that if they choose to, they, they like to be there and they just feel off put from the team. So like, I just, I think that it just sucks. It sucks all around for everybody. Um, and uh, I, I just hope they find a way to, to, to enjoy it and move forward and, and like buy in, but it's, it's not been great so far. Yeah. I don't know how you fix that because the gatekeepers are the gatekeepers. It's usually yeah. like my dad's super rich. He gave me the team. I don't really know what's going on here. And they're going to be around. Trevor May is going to be done. Todd Frazier is going to be done. Eric Kratz yeah. is going to be done. Right. And the they next, don't, they don't go. And the next, Nick Allen is going to be around to play for him, and True. someone else is going to be playing. And there's going to, we're going to talk with a minor league prospect. He's going to be playing. So, mm-hmm. well, we'll keep Absolutely. fighting the good fight, talking about it on here because we, <laughs> we don't hold back. No, um, Trevor, good. dude, it was awesome getting you on here for the first time. Uh, for everyone, follow him at I am Trevor May. Um, and we'll post some of this stuff on there, but dude, um, anytime, obviously this was great. Really enjoyed it. Happy off season and keep doing your thing. Thanks boys. Appreciate you. It was a pleasure. Cheers. Yeah, it was great. Trevor May, um, on FT live, Braun Frazier and Kratz, uh, a couple minutes away from bringing in our next guest too, who is a young one, Jackson Job. What a big league name. Young oh, phenom. You get a last name as your first name. name. His parents knew, right? Dude is going to be do. in the bigs. He's going to get a big ass signing bonus. And when they announced that, you know, it, I'm not going to throw another name under the bus because I'm not going to do that. But they're like, it's got to be Jackson Job. You love throwing names under the bus. No, yeah, I, well, yeah. real names like of of individuals. No, I'm not going to throw like a common person you know, <clears throat> no, name because then someone's going, "That's my kid's name." You know. You tell oh. me you don't name your kid Job too. All right. Like you mean you mean <laughs> he's not you Eric weren't, Job. You weren't going Todd with, Job. You weren't going Scott with as, Job. as Drupal Frazier. As, as, as Drupal. <laughs> I love I love that's something that's that underrated in baseball is like the unique names. And I when had I a good hear one you, in minor leagues, Keltavius Jones. Come on, that is so big. How Keltavius. did he not make it? Poor How he, did he not make he, it? Small left hander. He could slap hit with the best of them. It just didn't no pan out, man. Kel- what say it again? Keltavius with a K. Keltavius. I mean, Blaze Jordan with the Red Sox. Yeah. Well, let's bring this right into the combo right now. Jackson Joe, big Tigers prospect, Oof. joining us. He's out at the Arizona Fall League. Jackson, how you doing, dude? And do you appreciate the show name that your parents gave you? The show name. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. And yeah, I I definitely appreciate it. I guess. We'll take it. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that's a big deal. Like you, there's a lot of like there's a lot of tools you can have. You can throw a billion miles an hour. You can have a hammer curveball. You know you can have good looks, but a big league name like you're already on the mound. You've already struck out like three of the guys in the lineup with a name like Jackson Job. So just so you know, <laughs> you're ahead of the game. You struck me out when I was younger, and we didn't even face each other. <laughs> I love it. I love it. How's it going out there? So where are you? What's the plan while you're out there? Um, what's your daily schedule like? Give me the lowdown on Arizona Fall League life. Yeah, it's been amazing. I'm in. Uh, I'm living in Scottsdale right now. For I'll be down here for just this month of October. Uh, but I think it goes on a little bit into November. And for the most part, it's it's been pretty laid back. Show up to the yard at around two get our throwing in shag a little bit of vp and then head out for the games i think they've been at 6 30 for the most part so i mean it's been it's been a lot of fun and definitely something i had heard about uh, before coming so was hoping i would get the invite and glad i did 
Let me ask you this. I'm looking, we're looking at some film. I don't know if you could see this right now, but yeah. um, what, what would be your equalizer? You know, you have your fastball, of course, but what would you say that next pitch is the one that's going to get the guys out? I know you got a couple of different kinds, but your go-to pitch when you need to get yeah, a guy would, out with two strikes. Yeah, I would say it's really been up until this year, the slider has been my pitch. Um, still is a good pitch. Like on paper, it's my best pitch, but I'd say my changeup has probably performed a little bit better this year just for whatever reason, finally figuring out how to locate it. And um, I just don't think a lot of guys are expecting it up there, especially righties. So I've been able to have success with that pitch this year, which I think has been pretty huge. But Was that your choice to develop that pitch, or was there a pitching coach that was like, hey, you know, this changeup's going to be legit for you and, and really taught it to you? Yeah, no, I kind of just – started messing around with it. I mean, I threw one in high school and it was kind of average. Didn't really have to use it, obviously, because I'm facing, you know, high school guys. Um, but then getting here and getting my teeth kicked around a little bit last year, I figured that I need to mix things up a little bit better. So. Hey, with that big signing bonus, everybody goes out, they either buy a car, buy mom a house or whatever. Was there a big <laughs> purchase that you made for the family or for yourself? <laughs> Uh, honestly, no. My dad's my dad's big on me, you know, saving up and making sure that I don't that I don't get into all that. So th there will be a day for sure when I when I splurge a little bit, but not yet. And what is it? And what what what? what you, know, you you have a list, or you a got watch? like a? Oh yeah, a yeah, yeah. I uh, I told myself when I debut, I was gonna buy myself like a nice car as like a like a present, I guess, for myself. So we'll wait till that day comes. But I already got a few different few different cars in mind so oh wow. and and what are they because i mean you're playing for detroit it's a motor city you got a you got a you got a lot of connections True. there are we talking <laughs> are we going electric or are we going big truck are we going sports car uh i think we're going like maybe maybe a mercedes route possibly i got a truck right now and it's oh, yeah. it's kind of a pain to have to park everywhere it's super big so I'm kind of leaning towards like a smaller, a little fast something. So we'll see. Yeah, that's a smart move. That's a smart yeah. move. Still living with mom and dad. Save that money as much as you can. Dude. Say, you don't need yeah, a house. Exactly. Don't, no. <laughs> you don't need your own exactly. place. No. You're hey, home for four months. Yeah. What, what, what are your goals um, on the short term and the long term? And obviously, we, we know the classic. Like, everyone wants to win a World Series. What, what else you got? Like, what, you know, you look 10 years, 12 years, 15 years from now. What do you hope that you can say you did? Yeah, I mean, obviously, big thing is the World Series. I mean, the Tigers haven't won a World Series since, I think, like 1984. So I think I think making that happen would be pretty dang cool for a lot of people. And then aside from that, I mean, you know, Cy Young, All-Star, like all that stuff. But, I mean, you know, the, the biggest thing, yeah, I mean, you said besides World Series, but like thinking of it really right now and watching postseason baseball right now, there's there's got to be nothing better than that. So who, who would you say you, you, you emulate your game after? Is there a guy that, that you looked up to somebody you're like, man, you know, this is the guy I love watching him pitch. I want to I want to be like this, dude. Yeah, right now it's it's definitely Garrett Cole. He's he's the pitcher that I definitely watch the most. Mm -hmm. Um but growing up, it was Tim Winscombe. He was he was my ride or die. He was my he was my guy. I watched every single one of his starts, and I don't, I don't know what it was, but something about him, I just I loved him growing up. So that's my guy at heart. But uh, right now, playing currently is is definitely Garrett Cole. All right. So he was you were talking about a lot of like long term goals. I'm looking at where you you ended in Double A, right? You had one Correct. start in Double A. One start. I need you to get I need you to get your mind wrapped around pitching in Erie in April next year because that is a grind. Are you ready for pitching in, in Erie in April or Toledo, <laughs> which or Toledo, whichever, because there's some there's some wind in that, John. Like it is cold. Yeah, I, I honestly am not sure. I don't think I've ever pitched in any type of weather like that. I mean, the beginning of this year, I was I was rehabbing. So I was in Florida and then the year before, I was in low A in Florida. So, I mean, I, I got no idea what it's going to be like. So, all I can do is just hope for the best, I guess. Uh, you, you ever pitch in snow before? 
if I ever pitched with snow? No, I don't think. No, in snow, think yeah, so. no. Well, Eric, Eric's trying to give you an inkling. You're Does gonna, it snow for those games? Oh, Jesus Almighty! In April and I, especially Toledo. It is a in great. Toledo, it's a great yeah. place to be a pitcher. <laughs> Let's put it that way. It, it's a great place to be a pitcher. Hitters, yeah, you, like are gonna, you are going to, you are going to, you are going to destroy hitters' dreams. You're just going <laughs> to, you're going to be making graves for hitters with the with the stuff we're watching on that video. You're going to be just busting dudes' hands, Ooh. knuckles, just fingers are just going to be laying in the batter's box, and you'll be like, "I'll take those." <laughs> <laughs> just got to be, just got to be ready. If that like doesn't that. make Cold. you want to get up to the big leagues. I don't know what will. Dude. Yep. <laughs> hey. A- who are your guys on um, the Tigers, whether it's in the system or in the big leagues? Have you made some friends and had these conversations so far? Because there's a lot of young dudes, right? You've seen a young position player group start to make some noise, um, like a Riley Green and, and Torque now. What he, he got to 30-plus this year, okay. so he had a much better second season. Have you gotten to spend some time with those guys yet and be like, yo, this, this is going to be the group here that gets the 84 thing scratched off? Yeah, I have. Actually, my first spring training, um, me and another high school that was drafted my year, Isaac Pacheco, we hung out with Riley and Torg a few times. I got to eat, playing golf or whatever. Um, but I mean, as far as like guys go in the org, like there's, we, we got such a great group of guys, honestly, just from, from top to bottom. Like I played, I played in the complex league, low A, high A, and double A this year, all from coming back from injury and like, each level I went up, like the the guys were just they're they're awesome. Like it's it's just a ton of fun playing in this org. And I don't know if that's how it is everywhere else. Obviously, it's the only place I've been in. But I mean, we just got a great group of guys. I feel like got something special going on. So it's been fun to be a part of. All right, now you're in the AFL right now. Sometimes it can be a grind for people, but you're playing with some of the best future competition that's out there. Now, my team, in 05, we had Ryan Zimmerman, Chris Young, um, Brandon Moss, David Murphy. So we had some future big leaguers. Now, I know I'm forgetting somebody that's, that had a great career. But who in your team are you looking at in the short season? You've been there so far, and you're like, whoa, this dude's going to be a big leaguer for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I'm biased, but definitely Tigers guy, Jace Young. He's uh, He had a really good year this year. I think he hit like 28 pumps or something. Um, and then uh, we got a switch hitting catcher, uh, Drew Romo, who's been pretty solid. He's caught a few of my pins. Um, and I'm trying to think outside of Tigers guys. I mean, we got another Tigers guy, Justice Bigby, that hit like 340 this year has just been unreal. So that's been a treat to watch. Um, but, yeah, I hate to I hate to rule anybody out. I mean, I would imagine that a lot of these guys are going to go on and, and do good things. So it, that's, that's a tough one. Do you look at um, a team and a division like the Tigers and the American League Central and say, hey, this could be a really great opportunity for me to get up to the show quicker because obviously there's nobody we'd ever talk to that's a prospect that's like you know what i really would like to stay here and just marinate for as long as <laughs> yeah. possible so like if i'm you i'm looking at you know a couple of things one is we are seeing prospects getting called up quicker than ever that's cool for you we know what the goal is and two you're in a division where there's like a lot of turnover and rebuilding versus i'll give you the example though versus like and it's different this year because the Dodgers went through a lot of injuries. But like sometimes, you know, you'll meet a player on a team that's good every year. And it's like, damn, I, I can't crack the the big league roster there. And for you, you know that if you're thriving in the minors, like they're going to call you up and be like, yo, we're ready. Let's go. Yeah, no, absolutely. It definitely helps to see kind of where we're at. Obviously, we're not where the Dodgers are, or Braves or some of those organizations are yet where they got so much money and contracts and the, their guys. Um, so yeah, definitely, it definitely is encouraging to see that. Um, but obviously I gotta do my part and I know that it's not going to be given to me, but I definitely see, see what's going on on that end. And it definitely, definitely is, is encouraging to see. Um, but yeah, hopefully we can make it up there and then win some games and, 
go from there, make it happen, I guess. So, Jackson, what do you do to get ready for um, an outing? What do you look at info-wise? Um, are, do you have favorite stats? What kind of reports are you getting? Um, and I know, obviously, once you get up to the bigs, there's going to be a lot more. But do you try and kind of get in a rhythm where you're like, you know, looking at video of yourself from your last start? What's the move? Yeah, I would say the biggest thing um, and a tool I use, um, there's this website called True Media, and it pretty much tracks the entire baseball world of guys heat maps and things like that and damage that they do with certain pitches so i like to see where guys do damage with the fastball um and so that gives me kind of an idea of like okay what's this guy looking for and for me yeah i throw hard or whatever but my fastball has been the pitch that has taken the most damage this year by far and it's not even close guys are just going up there getting on time for the fastball and doing damage um so I, I had to figure out this year, you know, where my fastball plays best, what are guys trying to do with my fastball. And majority of the time, guys are looking for that fastball middle in, whether it's a righty or a lefty. They want it middle in so they can do damage with it. So for both righties and lefties, I just try to keep keep the fastball in the outer half. Um, and then obviously for righties, I have Uh-oh. Somebody hit him up. Phone call. Phone call. It's part he's, of it. He, he's sounding good right there. That's I mean, a good report yeah. there. He it seems was. like he's – I'm so impressed with kids, how young they are, that they can – Articulate, man. They have that – yeah, they just have that ability already. Like, he's 21 years old. Mm -hmm. Like, Probably 21, I was year. still in college. Yeah. And he most likely will be up next year. Mm-hmm on a team that needs him to be good, not just like, hey, we'll get your feet wet. Now he's got a good manager that knows how to, like, start working guys into the big leagues mm -hmm. in A.J. Hinch, but, like, and he's got other guys up there that, you know, just recently so they can they can kind of tell him, oh, you know, don't worry about this or focus on that. But still, like, everybody looks at your, like, ridiculous ability – He's in a league now where everybody has the same ability. You have mm -hmm. to have that that it factor where you're either like, bro, I'm good. Like, I'm just looking at true media stuff. Like, that's <laughs> how I build my scouting reports. That's how I built my scouting reports. I got, like, nine true media accounts open on my computer right now. Like, it's the go-to thing. And if you were to, like, if you were to show one of these reports, just one of my hitter reports on camera, people would be like, huh? Yeah. What is that? It's red and green and blue, yep. and there's numbers, there's percentages. And for him to be able to delve into that and read it and, like, even say that that's what he's using is light years Ahead advanced. Everything, yeah. No, I wasn't there at all. And, and, and it's not for everybody. I'm not saying no. it needs to be for everybody. But, but still, it's, it's amazing. 21, you were still in college. Yeah. No, I was. You were at Rucka to Curse. I was worried about what I was eating. I was starving. Right. Hungry. You were just hungry. I was going up there swinging, free swinging. This dude, because you could. <laughs> no, you could too. I could. You, you're wrong. You, I was playing division. I was playing division three baseball. You were at the. You were in the real jungle, division nah. one. Well, listen. You either have it or you don't. This guy seems like he's got it. I mean, some from that video, he kind of got that Corey Kluber esque to me. I don't know. I just saw okay. his smoothness. Four or five different pitch pitcher. His his sweeper, as we call it, was filthy. And then he had a little baby cutter and then the chain. I mean, he looks smooth as silk, man. I can't wait to see him when he gets to the show. Talking to A.J. Hinch, when he took the job three years ago, he mm -hmm. talked so much about like, hey, you know, this guy's coming. This guy's coming. This guy's here. Mm -hmm. This is where the Tigers are building. They're building around the young pitchers. And now they've drafted a couple young position players that are coming in and some of those pitchers haven't panned out. You got your Tommy John surgeries. You got, you know, some guys graduate sooner. Some guys don't figure it out in the big leagues sooner. 54%. 54% winning? <laughs> I know A.J. Hinch isn't about 54% no, winning. I'm but, not, I mean, yeah. you talk about a guy at the end of the season, the Tigers, Tarek Skubal, who's punching out the world from the left side, was a reliever. Then you start bringing this, you know, a guy like this up next year. If he's up next year, 22 years old, he's not just like, he's not turning 22 in this offseason. He's turning 22 
during the end of the season next year. Mm-hmm. Like them. it's you root for guys. These young it's guys, a, it you should root. be exciting, especially with Torkelson and Carpenter. Riley Green starting to come into his yep. athletic own. Like he's starting to understand what it means to be the center fielder in the big leagues. Mm-hmm. It's a division you it's, can grab quickly too, because it is the worst division in baseball. I don't think it's going to change anytime soon, just based on also the revenue that goes on there and the spending, right? Like most of those spending. teams don't spend much. So what yeah. it does is someone put it well the other day. They were like, Hey, you can't just spend your ass off and guarantee that you're going to be a world series team or even a playoff team but you can raise your floor usually that way, right? If you spend money Twins. and you're, you're picking up all these big leaguers, it's it's hard for you to be super terrible. Where in the AL Central, like teams are going to go through that rebuild process. They're going to spend nothing. They're going to tank. They're going to come back. Yep. Like You're going to go <clears> through some terrible, right? Kansas City's been going through that for a while. And the point I wanted to make here with the Tigers is like they went through that rebuild, and the rebuild then didn't really work out. So Regressed. They're kind of redoing the rebuild. And a lot of those guys like Casey Mize and Manning and they either, I mean, for the most part, it's been injuries, but also you haven't seen them perform super well yet in the big leagues over a consistent period of time. There are a lot of names there from that class. Now you're already getting the next wave. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Kids are getting better and better. But I think that's what they're doing with the Tigers. They're building that minor league system to be able to continue to feed them. And the twins should be, the twins should be congratulated for spending. Yeah. They spent as far as central teams go, besides the Cubs, NL Central, the the Cardinals, they've spent, yep. but central teams don't spend. They don't have to spend, they don't want to spend, whatever it is, that's not mm-hmm. the argument here. The twins, they've spent in different unique ways comparatively, and look where they're at. Yep. Yeah, well, you also get rewarded um in those front offices for I mean for mediocrity sometimes. We, we went over I it at agree. the deadline. I agree. Twins, big winners at the deadline. What'd they do? Nothing. <laughs> oh, but everyone else sold, so <laughs> they're good, including the team that had an outside shot of catching them. Cleveland. Cleveland. They got rid of their t- a top three starter. <laughs> and then they picked up everybody on waivers and were like, we're only six out. We can catch them. And the Twins were like, beat it, nerd. Exactly. Yeah. I knew you were going to say that. I was like, what like that was that was fascinating and a lot of other teams were pissed because they missed out on them all right uh let's move on um we appreciate jackson for joining us i think he yeah. lost battery so and we, we got a good 20 out of them but we'll bring in some top prospects around the sport over especially over the next month while they're all out there together at the arizona fall league so it's cool to talk to these guys and then you know years from now on ft we'll look back and be like yeah, you baby face jackson joe when you're 21 we <laughs> remember when you. you didn't shave yeah <laughs> Now you're I get that big ass in, beard. Now you're in the playoffs. Exactly. Junior Jackson. Uh let's move on. We're gonna highlight some players that stood out from the last round before we get ready for the division series this weekend. And our friends at MLB and Nine Innings Rivals are gonna help us out with that. We all love the game. The game. The game. We all put in our blood, blood, sweat, sweat, and tears. We're all pushing, we're all pushing, pushing, pushing for the same goal. We all want to be the best. We all want to be the best. The competition never ends. Never ends. And rivalries, rivalries are made. Are made. Start your rivalry, start your rivalry today in MLB 9 inning rivals. Fire. To get you hyped? Such good commercials. Good, like good. I, lo- I love these commercials. I always try to watch the commercial too. Like, I wonder what field they, they film that at. Yeah, yeah, the background. Like I try to I try to figure it out, like the trout commercial that they put out. Yep. Him hitting dingers. And then Griffey robbing the one. Yep. My mind's like, right there. man, I hope Griffey and Trout were at the same place. Like, yeah, that'd be yeah. cool. But yeah. you know, you know, I don't know how that Most all that stuff not. works. Yeah. But <clears throat> I love trying to figure that out. Oh, that's field four over to Angels Complex. Yeah. <laughs> it is so cool. Fun. So let's go over our FT playoff performers from the first round. You want to highlight a guy that you're like, hell yeah. He showed up. Pitcher, hitter, whatever you got. Who is a dude that stood out? Who wants to go first? I go first. I am Jordan Mon- I, it's like it's two. Okay. Jordan Montgomery slash Nathan Navaldi. I mean, just mm-hmm. seeing those two pitch well. 
everybody's like, ah, well, we gonna get, are we going to get the Nathan Evaldi of old? Is Montgomery that guy? Well, yes, they both are that guy, and they came through big, especially in Tampa where they weren't at home, even though it felt like a home game for them. I mean, <laughs> the dude's a rookie. The dude stole 50 bases, 25, 50, 10, first guy, first rookie ever, Corbin Carroll. Like this dude, the, the moonshot that he hit, it wasn't even a moonshot. It was just an absolute rocket in that series against the Brewers. Corbin Carroll hitting that home run that, to me, was the like, I mean, wasn't a nail in the coffin, but when he did that, you were like, the, the, whole, the whole moniker of, oh, these guys, they're not going to be able to hit Burns. They're playing for game two and three. They don't have a lot of power. Corbin Carroll's like, oh, yeah, by the way, mm-hmm. I can do this too after I stole 50-plus bases. So, for me, he, he leads that team. He's the, he's the battery that makes that engine burn. So, I've got one, but I actually want to throw one other your way first, Todd Father, because you played the position a bit. You see what Longo oh, did? Oh, man. People and, were like, yo, Longo from 10 years ago? You back? No, he's still got And he looks smooth as silk, don't it? A little smirk on his face, diving for that ball up in the air. Diving to his to his right, picking up. I mean, and then hit a nice little knock the other way. He, uh, yeah, he he looked really smooth the other day, man. Too, he's he's going to be helping them out along with along this run they're making for sure. Yeah, I'm looking like his speed. You know, it's it's not what it used to be. No, on the attributes. Come on, give the guy a little bit more than that. What give him mean? a little more. I need, need need some speed for the guy. He made it. He made two diving plays. He did. What does that have to do with speed? He's not stealing bases left He's and right quick. like the rest of his teammates. The rest of his teammates have that covered. Okay. 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 Corbin's got all the bags for him. For me, I obviously have to point out Royce Lewis. We oh. also were just with him. I mean, yeah. Oh, Todd yeah. Father and myself and Danny Graves when we were in Cincinnati, it was Reds Twins, and we met Royce Lewis actually at dinner. Passed by, had a little combo, brought him on the next day. Stud, human being, great dude, teammates love him, already acting like he's been in the bigs for a while, and you, you mean that, you know what I'm saying, not in the way not like, a bad oh, way. beat it nerd, in the way like, I'm a professional human being, you do not have to worry about me being prepared for this game, plus I know how to freaking celebrate, show me the money mm. on the two homers, Gossman wasn't tipping, if you missed yesterday's <laughs> show with Jace Tingler, that is confirmed, um, but two dingers in his nitro zone, uh, you know, belt high fastballs, brought him to do different, two different parts of the yard. Oh, dude's got ridiculous pop. He was a former first overall pick. He has gone through some shit with injuries. He's gone through a lot. Have you tracked how much he's been through already? Cause I think it was 2017 was yep. when he was picked. I mean, he's had some significant injuries, including last year he's back, um, and then ends up going through another, what was it, ACL surgery, yep. partially retour that same ACL yep. when he was put in the outfield because this is an infielder. And they're like, yo, try the outfield, and he's good. But then he gets hurt again. So when he's on the field, man, he's, he's replacing right now, I know it was a short series, the offense that they were wishing they would have from Byron Buxton right now, right? Mm-hmm. That kind of pop is what Royce Lewis just brought in that first series. Agree huge huge and they need that if they're going to take down the astros you're going to need more of that they're going to have to put some more runs up too i'm like, I'm, yeah. I'm not i'm not saying they're not good i'm just saying they're going to have to put up a little more cuz you're saying that astros offense yeah, is going to bring yeah, it more. i think they will yep. yep well here's the problem too you're going to have to put those runs up in my mind in those first 5 6 innings because good luck brian abreu is fucking insane mm. he is ridiculous their bullpen in general still it's not the numbers overall in the season weren't as good as I think last year, but lately, the last month, totally locked in for playoff mode with the circle of trust for Dusty. Is it is it the same? I mean, that's what I was going to ask. Well, you. Is Ra- the Rafael same? Montero is terrible now. Right. So who's who's picking up his slack? They don't have, you know, they lost Maton late in the playoffs last year. It didn't end up hurting them. Yeah. They still Maton's, have Presley. Maton's back. But and is he going to slide in to Presley's take care strong. of that? Presley's. So, strong so to quite strong. Here's the difference. Does it, Neris last year was really good. This year he is even better. So it's Neris and Abreu and Presley. That's already a really strong three. And there's other guys stuff-wise that could back them up. There's other decent relievers. And yeah, Maton's there. And you're not 
they so they still always have that mix where it's like, uh, what, what's JP France going to do? Because he was pretty good for them all year. Is he going to do some, you know, multiple inning action out of That's the it. bullpen? Hunter Brown kind of slipped towards the end of the year. He's got nasty stuff. I think but, they moved him into the pen at the end of the year. Right. Because so, he's going to, you know, they, there's they a lot to there. A million. I'm Our boy Graveman, my favorite player. <laughs> See, yeah. I think I think that's the guy that's going to be the he's, he's the, the X friend. factor. He's the X factor. I'm not saying he's going to win or lose the series. I'm saying their ability to mitigate when Framber has a five inning outing, when they've gone back to back games and Verlander's got Verlander only gives you five mm-hmm. when you needed it. You need those four guys. I feel like the teams that only have three. And I think Graveman's on that outside. I think Nary's, I think Hector's stuff plays ridiculously in the playoffs. I think it's more because everybody's amped up to hit and that splitter comes out and you're like, yup. And then you swing and you're like, nope, Whoa. wasn't there. <laughs> and so I think that's, and Presley's, Presley's the guy. Abreu, what he's been doing has been unbelievable. But I really think whether you're using Graveman to clean up the seventh and then start the eighth, whether you're using him to clean up one of your bullpen pieces, that maybe Abreu has a bad outing where it's like, ah, we really used him for 16 pitches last game. First 16 pitches, he walks two and punches out two. We just can't get him to the fifth hitter. Then you go to then you go to Graveman. I think he's the guy. He is really going to be that linchpin. That I was puts, a big fan of the pickup. You remember? You were. Uh, Your boy. Yeah. Scan the QR code uh, and download MLB Nine Innings Rivals. It is free to download. Bottom right corner of your screen right there right now. It's a game focused on the strategy of the sport, testing your ability to take a real team to the top of the rankings. And uh, the game features new battle content, postseason pick em modes, switch between quick play, highlight play, and full play. Check it all out. Scan that QR code. Free to download MLB Nine Innings Rivals. And thanks to them for hooking us up with some of those graphics as we went through those dudes. Yeah, that's um, sick. Ready for uh, a sick game. It is. Ready for a little call? <laughs> yeah. Call to, to finish off our Friday. <coughs> Let's slap. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, yeah. stepbrothers, relax. Uh, our amp caller is on the line. Name, theme, question, or comment, please. And unmute. And take mute off. Hey, 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 hey. Wait, Coming hold on. In. You're a little close to the Coming phone. in hot from okay. Bayonne. Yeah. My bad, my bad. Is better? You're good. Yep, yep. We got yeah. you. What's up? Name, team, question, or comment. What do you got? I got... Let's fast forward a week, a week or so from now, and the Phillies are in the NLCS. Why are they there? Is it a Phillies thing? Is it a Braves thing? Why would they advance a week or so from now? And your name, though? What? We get a name? Oh, yeah, we Seth. don't have a name. You forget your name? Seth. Seth. Thank you, Seth. Appreciate it, dude. Why, Why are you fast f- forwarding? Fast forward. Dang it. Don't fast forward through a great series. <laughs> Let's enjoy well, well, it. I like to do this, right? In one of the few things that didn't feel totally fake always with TV life, like Braves are in the NLCS because blank Phillies are in the NLCS because blank, like what's got to happen in your mind. Like if this doesn't happen, they're not getting past team X. Whoever's bullpen has the lowest ERA goes to the NLCS. Really? The Braves are going to hit the Phillies are going to hit Maybe not quite as much as the Braves. Obviously, if they win, it's going to be because, you know, they hit a little bit more. They score more runs. But I think it's going to be off the bullpens. Mm -hmm. It's so hard to tell because the Braves are so locked in this year hitting. I mean, you make a good point about bullpens. I I think it's going to be starting pitching. If the Phillies can do what they did these last couple games – I, I think they're gonna they're gonna win and very convincingly. I I, really? I think it's gonna be Philadelphia or, or nothing now. I mean, I just in how many games from from what I saw, no more than oh, man four don't. or five. It's not a sweep. I'm I'm gonna say I'm gonna say five. So you think it'll That's go the all. distance? I take that back. It's best out of five. Why why am I thinking it's best out of seven? Not yet. Best out of five. No, no, I'm. 
I'm saying four. Four. Okay. You're afraid of Philly. You're afraid of them playing in Philly. You talked yeah. about it. Yeah. One. Yeah. Well, That's... and then it ends there, and it doesn't go back. That's what he's saying. They, they're gonna, they just, all they have to do is win one in Atlanta. Right. And then you think they got two in Philly with Wheeler and Nola. That's it. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, one's in Atlanta, obviously. No. Wheeler's I think, in Atlanta. I think Nola's the swing game is going to be the Nola game. Mm-hmm. How he does against the Braves. I've seen some outings where he has punched out the world. I think his career high was against the Braves. Mm-hmm. So I he think was that's great the other be... day, but not not on the case. I mean, he had I think three Ks. No. Yeah, but that's a tough team to strike. Yeah, out. it's a contact. Marlins don't strike out much, mm. which is crazy. They used to strike out a ton. Yeah, I mean, Luis Arise shows up, and all of a sudden, everyone knows how to make contact there. Just saying. Who in that trade is still join in at, the playoffs? Follow at foul territory if you want to make a call like that. What? Who in that trade is still in the playoffs? So who won the trade? Mm. Is that what we're basing things on? So to show how Tani sucked because he's never in the playoffs. But he wasn't in a trade. Oh, so we're going to play that, though? So I can just pick players that ended up in trades and are not in the postseason? Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, you can. But in this case, who won the trade? Yeah, I think it's still pretty even. Even. I've got a hat for Kratz hats. It's even. Yes. It's a Merca. We're going into the weekend, playoff weekend. I found another Merca hat. Jose and Jose B. There you go. Happy playoff season, everyone. Um, National League and American League Division Series going down this weekend. We'll be watching. Stay tuned also for some news on our socials about some extra coverage next week of games. Maybe a watch party. Maybe a post-game show or two. Stay tuned. Maybe a little FT at night. We'll see you on Monday.